This episode of Uzo Talk is brought to you by Kingsford Smith Transport. Have a group that needs transporting? KST has you covered with their fleet of professionally maintained buses and coaches, catering from 9 to 57 passengers and driven by experienced drivers. Visit kstbuses.com.au to talk to the team and make your booking. Kingsford Smith Transport, proud sponsors of the Uzo Talk podcast. There's no Uzo Talk without a bottle of Uzo, which is why we love the Greek Provador. Get a real taste of the very best produce that Greece has to offer. From olive oils and delicious artisan sweets to unique spirits, earthy herbs and memorable wines. Visit thegreekprovador.com.au to see their amazing range. The Greek Provador, proud sponsors of the Uzo Talk podcast. Sound is... Well, what a season this has been, Nick. Just when you think we've peaked, another amazing Greek turns up on our shores. And we just had to have him on the show, didn't we? But we pulled out all the stops today. <laughs> we did, mate. Look, not just any Greek. Look, a, a living legend. This guy, I just can't wait for you to introduce this guy. He's a fucking classic already. We've already gone an hour in without even hitting record. I know. I know. You're right. And look, he's actually very close to my heart because believe it or not, he was one of my first ever on-camera interviews oh, as wow. a journalist right here in Sydney over a decade ago now. Not only that, it has to be said that he was very encouraging of my career at the time, so I'm very grateful to him for that. Honestly, you'd think I was talking about a motivational speaker or something. He's, <laughs> he's not that, let's be clear. You can hear him in the background already, but we have a comedian in our midst, Nick, uh, which always seems to be more fun. Mate, introduce him. <laughs> All right, so our guest is an Emmy-nominated Greek-American actor, voice actor, and stand-up comedian who's entertained both Greeks and non-Greeks alike everywhere from the United States, Canada and Europe to as far afield as Australia and Africa. He has over 100 television appearances to his name, including on HBO, Showtime, Comedy Central, A&E and The Tonight Show on NBC even. He's also known for his voice work as Universal Studios' Bullwinkle J. Moose, as well as for voices on Cartoon Network and even Japanese anime series. He's back in this country as part of his Blame It on the Greek stand-up world tour, Nick, τι να σου πω, κατσικιάσαμε εδώ μέσα, βρωμάει. Μπέιζλ Κατσίκας, finally welcome to Uzo Talk. I mispronounce your name, Tom, really, Tom? It was a slip of the tongue. Good to be with you boys on Uzo Talk. Thank you both, Nick, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No, no idea. Look, it's so been awesome. Dude, you know, I'm coming here and, you know, you, you put all the food in front of me. I mean, look, I'm a big boy. I don't know if I'm a guruni like you people think. Or you put all this phyto, and the phyto is brought to you by... Meet the, meet Greek. the Greek. Meet the Greek. <laughs> and this is, listen, if you're going to meet the Greek, you're going to blame it on the Greek. At the same time, why not? Exactly. But the food here is fantastic. So for the gentleman who came earlier and dropped off that food... Pete Lugios. Pete Lugios. He's Mr. Petros, Meet the that Greek. That was unbelievable, brother. The, the fight uh, is unbelievable. Just truly amazing. What have we actually got here? We've got you so have, much stuff. You have yeah, you got gota, you have uh, sausage, you got uh, chicken, we have corta. Corta. Got corta. And I was getting a flashback of my mom and Yaya picking corta on the side of the highway. <laughs> as soon as I had that, we got <laughs> calamari, apoki, echume patatules. Love it. I've noticed the corta hasn't been touched yet. No, it will be. Trust me. I usually cut it up and then snort it afterwards. Yeah. So it's something unique that I usually do. So, but it's going to be on the show oh, with y'all. Yeah. We love the fact that you finally come back to Australia. Finally. And join the Uzo Talk podcast. Yeah, I tell you what. You know what? You and I were going back and forth, I guess, for, for a couple of months. You were sweet enough to reach out to me. And he said, hey, I heard you're coming back. And Tom, I am coming back. And then you reminded me. He says, we did the first original thing we did. That we did. And I think my hair was crazy, and it was all over the place. And I was like, I look like crap, for God's sakes. I'm a much better looking person. I really am. Look, just because I can't pick up dates in prison doesn't mean that I'm ugly, okay? It just means that I'm, some, I'm a little bit different, okay? Um, but it's great to be here with y'all. And we're doing this Blame It on the Greek tour, and we're very excited about it. Uh, ben Moriana has uh, put together this wonderful... Uh, program he's taking me all over and you know we're going to be hitting everything from brisbane canberra we're going to be going down to, up to Mel sydney then melbourne down to adelaide over to perth so i'm excited because i never played perth before mm. 
So it's going covering, to be a little bit different with that for sure. You're covering the whole continent there. Yeah, we're hitting the, well the entire, and then little cities in between. I know other shows are going to be popping up. And so I'm here. My visa uh, ends on uh, December 11th. So listen, I, I got to be on a plane by then. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm missing Thanksgiving. You know, well, that's huge and for you. huge and Halloween. Yeah, happy and, Halloween, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you so much. I'm dressed as a comedian, anyway. <laughs> so I, I'm doing something a little bit unique. Yeah. But I'm for Thanksgiving. I have no idea where to go because usually we mm. have like sixty to seventy people yeah. at my house. Yeah. I'm cooking at the Ani beginning at five o'clock in the morning, wow. and my wife is having buddy talks with the turkey. She's rubbing the turkeys down with olive oil, and I'm like. For once, I really wanted to be a turkey, just for a moment, just so, my, so my wife could rub me the right way. And I thought it would have been nice to be able to do that. But you know, Kula, oh yeah. yes, and I see Vromas. Yeah. And, you know, she go, and she's talking to the turkey, you're going to cook beautifully, you're going to cook nicely, you're going to be wonderful. And and very encouraging. And she is encouraging to the dead animal that we're about to eat. You know, yep. so um, to me, it was always amazing well, to sit great. there. Yeah. I feel you. <laughs> well, look, we need to have a drink. What do you reckon? Let's do it. Let's open the show properly. What do you reckon? I think we should, mate. Let's have a drink. Well, we've had a feed now. So I think that was we your have. first criteria. Was, we yeah. need to eat first before we had a drink. So. I, I definitely want to drink something and that in that bottle. All right. Let's do this. Let's cut to the music first and then we'll go to it. Done. What do you think? You got it. Cheers, Cheers, boy. This, hey, this is delicious. By the way, this really is. It good. is. Oh right? yeah, it is a quality from a quality Nick, sponsor. Nick, tell us what we're having. Okay, so we're compliments of our uh, amazing sponsors, the Greek Provador. The bottle says Cleos, the Mastica spirit. So we're having Mastica, and I believe it's from Mitilini. But um, yeah, as we know, Mastica is what from 500 BC. Uh, guys mm. like um, Herodotus wrote about it, and. Um, uh, who was the uh, modern day medicine? Oh, what's his name? Uh, her, um, Hippocrates. Hippocrates. That's right. Hippocrates said it's actually good for you, good for your digestive system. This mastiga. So, and we're actually drinking something that's supposedly good for us because it's got low in sugar. It says on the bottle. Yeah. So, but the there's a mati on the bottle yeah. <laughs> because things can go wrong when you have a lot of this, and you got to have the mati to protect. It. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying. No. Listen, it's delicious. It is. It really is delicious. Mate, As a matter of fact, from? I got to bring some of this back home. Well, it's it's great stuff. I think we mm. can. Uh, I think we can probably get you in touch with the right p- people to you know to, to take it back. Oh but, my gosh! <clears throat> uh, and yeah. it is, and it's actually got her name on the bottle too. It says uh, Crystal, Crystal Cleos. <laughs> I wonder if she's got anything to do with really? That. That's her name, Crystal. <laughs> yeah, is that's it really? her name. Yeah, it is. Cristali. It Different spelling, but and it's a beautiful bottle as well. It is a gorgeous the, bottle. Actually. What is it like? A hexagon. Shape. It uh, almost looks like a pillar two. of some description. Exactly, Greek pillar, and but it's yeah, beautiful. It is quality stuff. It tastes really good too. We've been very so, lucky with the drinks here, Basil. Have you really? A, a show called Uzo Talk. We've had many different types of uzo. We've had many different types of tsipuro. Right. Many different types of mastica. What else have we had? We've had whiskeys. Yeah, uh, the, the whiskey, the bird from Mark Burris as well. And we had obviously, one from Cyprus have, as well. Have you ever whiskey? had this? Um, this liqueur, it's a Greek liqueur, mm. but it's made out of honey. And uh, it is, un, I, if you haven't, I got to send it to you. What's I the one that you mentioned with Tsipro and honey? It's, it comes in a, in a square Racomelo. bottle. Oh, okay. And some guy, I was going to do a show, and I think I was in Connecticut. And before I got on the show, the guy goes, hey, you know, would you like... Uh, would you like to try something? As if, it, if it's metaxa, nothing against metaxa. <laughs> yeah. But last time I had metaxa, the hair came you off my legs. Or, and, yeah. you know, and it was like, no, I, I don't. Who it died? Was, yeah, it was like, mother of God. Yeah. <laughs> you're serving me. So I drank and I was, it was like seven star, something really, really good. right? Yeah. So, but I'm just not a metaxa drinker. He goes, nah, it's yeah. not metaxa. But try it. I trust me. And I said, okay. And it was like honey. Mm, beautiful. And it was delicious. Almost like Mastica that we're drinking now. Yeah, yeah, right. Sweet, no bitter aftertaste. You know yeah. when you do something like Tsipuro and you know, because my, my left eye will stand still because it's drunk and it doesn't want to move. <laughs> so I'm only got my right eye moving on and people are like, you okay? I, I don't know. 
<laughs> I, I really don't know <laughs> if I'm okay or not. <laughs> Classic. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, th- this you is sounded delicious. like Rocky Balboa then for a minute. No, uh, Rocky like this, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and I'm just telling you. you, know, you know, someone said, can you do, you know, because I do the voice of Bullwinkle. Sure. Okay, well, can you do Rocky? I said, sure. Hey, uh, Bullwinkle. The wrong Rocky. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and classic. now here's something I think you'll really like. So the woman <laughs> who did that, her name was June Ferre. So I was doing a series of Taco Bell commercials for Taco Bell. And they licensed Universal Studios to do the commercials. So I was doing Bullwinkle. Mm. So they fly me down to Orlando, Florida. And I'm in there. And there's June Ferre, who is an American icon. Mm. In voice, almost like Mel Blanc was doing Bugs yeah, Bunny wow. and Daffy Duck and all that. So all of a sudden, next thing you know, we're doing it. And I kept flubbing the line. I was so nervous in front of her. I was in one glass studio. She was in another glass studio. And in the middle was the engineer and some of the top brass from Taco Bell and Universal. Mm. So I kept flubbing. And I said it was going to be a tongue twister. And man, they were right. <laughs> you know, uh, finally, here's this woman, June Ferre, four foot eleven. About 90 pounds, looking like a glamorous older woman who's doing this great voice. And I'm here I am, after the third or fourth time I'm flubbing it up, where I'm going, you get tacos, burritos, and anything. And I kept flubbing this line over and over and over. And this beautiful older woman just breaks out into rock and goes, Hokey Smoke, Bullwinkle, I hope you can get this fucking line right so we can get the fuck out of here and drink. Well, fuck you, you little squirrel. <laughs> we're going back and forth with each other. And people are like, oh, my God, this is the best. We're just battling. I'm like, okay, you want to play? Let's play. Okay. <laughs> Next thing you know, I have the original DAT recording. And the yeah. only way you'll ever hear it is you got to come to my office <laughs> and hear it. Because the guy, the engineer, threw me the DAT. The yeah. DAT tape threw it to me and goes, here, kid, keep this. Yeah. It's something you'll never have again in your life. Yeah. And he was right. And wow. then about um, about four or five years later, she passed. Wow. wow. And I'm like, wow, man, indeed. Well, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the voice stuff. I mean, you mentioned Mel Blanc there. Sure. Is he the god of, uh, of voice acting He's in your, in the your mind? He's the epitome of what a true voice actor should be. Yeah. He was versatile. You're like when I do Japanese anime stuff, right, that comes over and they say, hey, we need, we need a lot of incidental parts. Or, okay. Mm. So you go, fine. I say, show me a picture of him. Mm. And, you know, uh, and he would do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, Daffy Duck to me was hysterical. Daffy was hysterical. He caused his own misery. You know, Bugs was great. He was the wise ass, you know. Um, you know, Sam, you know, he was always good. Ooh, I hate that rabbit. You know, yeah. <laughs> you hear all these different voices coming out. The Tasmanian devil, you know, and everything I think, I think of Australia yeah. because it's Tasmania, <laughs> yeah. you know, and he would come up with all these characters and he was so brilliant. And the deal was not to leave his son out of the picture. Mm. The deal was before he passed, he made... Warner Brothers sign a contract that they would give his son all those characters after wow. he passes, which was a travesty because his son didn't do it as well as he did. And there were other mm. people that did do it as well. Yeah, right. You know? Mm. So, but it is what it is. Yeah. Mel Blanc was the best. There's no two ways. But I love doing character work. One of my things, you know, that I did, I did a. I don't know if you watch ESPN at yeah. all. Okay, yeah. so we have the American ESPN. We have a, a series called 30 for 30. Mm-hmm. So I did the voice of Jimmy the Greek. This is what oh, you were wow. nominated for. Yeah, for the, that, that was my yeah. first Emmy nod on that, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I'll never forget when I, they gave me the script. They gave me the sides, and they said, can you lay down some track? And I had my own studio. I said, sure, I'll lay down some track for you. And I did a perfect Jimmy the Greek on the air because mm-hmm. that's all you really had of him. Yeah. It was on the air stuff. And he had that, and everyone, like here in Australia, everyone has their own cer- certain dialect yep. and tone of the way they speak, right? So I'm sitting there, I said, okay, all right, now fine, that's good, beautiful. Now, I mean, if I said, I got this down, bam, well, I'm going to get this role. <laughs> yeah. And the guy who hired me was a guy named George Varus. And George Varus was the guy who fired Jimmy the Greek oh, really? okay. from the NFL Today on CBS. Wow. wow. Right? So George's like, Basil, I know you got this. So I said, fine, sent in the stuff, not a problem. Uh, my manager comes to Wilmington from New Jersey. He said, we're at my studio. 
at my office and all of a sudden get a phone call. It's George Varis and the rest of the producers. And I said, hey, guys, what's going on? And I put it on speaker so my manager can hear. He goes, hey, Baze, what's happening? I said, well, what would you guys think? And they all like, that was unbelievable. And I'm thinking, yes. And all of a sudden someone screams out, but. And I'm like, oh, here we go. The old but. And he goes, but. I said, yeah, what we're really looking forward to is to hear something from Jimmy the Greek from the dead. <laughs> okay. And my manager, this wasn't a video call. This was an actual call on a speakerphone. It was on, and my manager and I went, what the fuck's that? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah, had no clue. <laughs> but what they wanted was someone who was more remorseful. Mm-hmm. That right. he was okay. sad about the way his life sure. went. Remember, he had five children, and three yeah. of the ki- children died of cystic fibrosis. Right. Just on that, just give us a quick brief of who Jimmy the Greek was. Jimmy the, the Greek was, he was famous. His real name was Jimmy Sionidis. Mm-hmm. And uh, they gave him the name of Schneider. Jimmy the Greek Schneider. Okay. So where's the, uh, where's the Greek part, yeah. except for the middle name that they tend the Greek? <laughs> Sounds German. And he was famous for making these, um, he would prognosticate and come up with these scores, mm-hmm. the odds, what they were going to be. Uh, like a bookie. Yeah, almost like a bookie, but they put them on television, right? Mm. So we were discussing earlier about the FCC. So what was happening, he would say, yeah, I'm going to give the Packers the edge at point and a half that they're going to beat, you know, whatever. And I'm going to go with this. So, so, you know. so all of a sudden people are like point and a half. And bookies are writing this stuff down. They're going crazy. It's a muddy field in Green Bay. So I'm thinking the Packers will probably take this from the Vikings about six and a half points. That's one of my spread is. Okay, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Well, the FCC said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't do that. You can't do that. So what he would do. <laughs> He would sit there and goes, okay, so a safety is worth two points. A field goal is three. A touchdown is seven. An extra point is one, right? So all of a sudden he'd go, he wasn't allowed to give numbers. So he would sit there and goes, yeah, a little bit less than a field goal. <laughs> Classic. A touch Only- less than a touchdown. <laughs> Only a Greek could, could come up with something like well, that. Well, you'd also have to see right? And I'm like, man, bravo, <laughs> don't you hear me? Yeah. So when he died, he lost his fortunes seven times. Wow. Seven times. But he actually was famous for gambling the, the Notre Dame Great Lakes University, which no longer exists anymore. And he took Great Lakes University over Notre Dame for the national championship game in college. And I'm like, wow, that's really awesome. Mm. And they did that. But he lost his mother when he was 10 years old by mm. a deranged uncle who shot his mother and the aunt that he was married to. Um, the man had, yeah, he had issues. Tough, yeah, you tough know, upbringing. Uh, but, oh, cool, man. Yeah, yeah, I felt yeah. bad for this son of a bitch. You know, I yeah. really did. So it was really an amazing uh, thing to hear about them, all these endings. Some of them had tragic endings. Mm. And, and we are the most progressive individuals, perhaps some of the most highly educated people. You know, Nick picks me up and he's like sitting there telling me, he goes, yeah, you know, I used to do this, this, and this. I'm like, what, what the hell are you doing a podcast for? <laughs> <laughs> and he go, but he's like, I was impressed. You know, with you, you've been doing this for so many years. We are aggressive. We are the people who go after it. And we do it with reckless abandon. Mm. And that's why I tell people, be proud that you're in Eddie enough for God's sakes. Go out there because we have more get up and go than anyone else. 100%. I'm just telling you, that's just the way it is. And it wasn't always like that. We've had this discussion before mm-hmm. that it took a while for the likes of us. I don't know what it was like in the U.S. We'll, we'll probably get to that. But there was a period where it wasn't cool to be Greek for us in Australia. And there was racism and there was all of sorts course. of things until yeah. we rediscovered our Greekness. Any of that sort of element for you growing I mean, up? I, I tell people, even on my stage shows, I said, the Greeks gave the world the cornerstone of society as we know it today. Definitely. We gave the world art, philosophy, democracy, everything from architecture all the way down to zoology. And what are we known for now? Yogurt. What the hell happened? <laughs> Where did we drop the ball exactly? <laughs> so I always try and tell people, you know, like in the United States, as soon as you were Greek, okay, and that you came all over the boat, what was the first place you typically went to? Was to a restaurant. You had some place to eat. You were going to make some money. You were either a dishwasher, 
You were the guy who was, you know, picking up the dishes, you know, over there, bus boy. Yeah, you were potatoes, the waiter, yeah. the cook. What? Yeah. So every time you mention a Greek, if your name ended with an IS, an OS, an AS, or an IOU, because you're a Cypriot, right? <laughs> if you were drafted in the military, guess where you could serve? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many eddiness were saved from the First World War, the Second World War, from the Vietnam and Korean Wars? Do you know how many Elibia? What's your name? Cosas, your last name? Cariodopoulos. Yeah. We got a kitchen for you that you're going to go to. Yeah, you know. Is that for real? That's but, true. Wow. Honestly, God, you know how many Holy. Greeks were saved Holy because shit. of their last names? Mm. Because they assumed that you could cook. And they were right. It might come in handy soon, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. 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 We'll just... <laughs> call me. We better have some really unique foods that we're going to be serving. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Fix it up a bit. <laughs> but look, I mean, the fact that we're talking about the ingenuity and the hardiness of the Greeks that emigrated. Let's go right back to the beginning for you. Sure. Where is your family from originally in Greece? My mother is a cariotina, fapetini caria. And by the way, I'll talk a little bit of Greek as well, so you can see. Yeah, yeah. Lina Shine. Enomizo, milai anglica. Historiaulo, the program I have to. Uso talk. Na. <laughs> That's what my papu would say. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> so I think my papu is related to your papu. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my mother's a cariotina, a Uh My father is from Andros. So we're Nisiotes. Yep. And it was kind of funny. Talking P, everyone wants to do their DNA. Mostly all the Greeks do. There are some Greeks will not do their DNA for fear of being found out that they're Turkish. Yes. Okay. So, no, no. <laughs> so my mother-in-law does, you know, she's from uh, a place outside of Tripoli, excuse me, called Nestani. Beautiful place. You go there. I mean, they, they have the church in, in, in the mountains. It's unbelievable. The handprint of Jesus stopping the boulder coming down from to land on the village. It's mm. an unbelievable story, and it's, it's beautiful. So anyway, my mother-in-law did the DNA, 23 and me, mm -hmm. and she was found out to have, you ready for this, 99.1% Greek. Wow. Okay, 99.1% Greek. Which is because, unheard of. Yeah, Anyone's going to ask, what was the point 0.9? Uh, the point 0.1. Uh, oh, point uh, nine. Uh, I'm sorry, but point 0.9. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Point, and 99.1, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it, didn't, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it was, what? what? A lost Africa. sailor or something. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was very dark. Okay, what I tell you? So 99.1%. Yeah. That's amazing. It is amazing, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. So my wife goes, well, I'm going to do it too. Because this is I'm the Icaria? No, the Tripoli This side. is the one from Tripoli, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So also my wife goes, because my wife's father is Icarian, yeah. like my mother. Oh, wow. And so my wife's going to go ahead and do it. All right. So my, my, epithi, my mother's epithet, her last name was Pastis. No, mm -hmm. P-A-S-T-I-S. I don't know of anyone else in the world, unless you're from Icaria, has the last name of Pastis. Mm. Okay? So I'm like, ah, that's my wife's going. I'm going to do my DNA because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty high up there. I'm like, okay, go ahead. Go for it. Yeah. She goes, okay. She was 73% Greek. Okay. A little bit of Italian, a little bit of Egyptian, a little mm -hmm. bit of Jewish in her, this, that, yeah. that. Okay. It's that was fine. So I'm like, that's pretty interesting. He goes, well, I'm going to buy you the kit for Christmas you know, as one of your gifts. I said, okay, that's fine. She gets me the kit. And all of a sudden, my kit comes. It was sitting on my desk for two years, not doing a damn thing. <laughs> okay, first week of COVID where I had to come home, I said, let me get rid of this damn thing. I spit in it, put, plug yeah. it in, do everything I was supposed to do. Yeah. Forgot about it for like two and a half months. Yep. All of a sudden, mine comes back. And I'm starting to laugh because she's trying to give me the pep talk, listen, because you're from Icaria and you're really close to Turkey and a lot of pirates went through there and your last name is Pastis, you know, it's Pastis, it's probably French. You're probably a lot more French and all these other things. But I said, listen, I'm an Elena, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm an Elena, I'm an Elena. I feel like we need Body a drum roll. Soul, yeah. I'm an Elena. So all of a sudden yeah. I get the results. Wait, what did you get? You ready? Yeah. 92% Greek, kidding. 8% wow. Italian, Yeah. which... Explains me always trying to sell, you know, protection to people. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I wind up going ahead and my wife goes, there is no freaking way that you are more Greek than I am. So I'm just telling you, that I don't believe it. I think you mess around with the numbers and you bullshit around. I will bring my laptop home. You open the link. You find out for yourself. 
She is freaking livid. She is sitting there. I can't believe this bullshit. Wow. This is bullshit. And I'm saying, hey, honey, tina super cool. And I'm like, you know, it is what it is. So she was fuming the whole night. Yeah. Since I got back from my office, and she, fuming. So I'm in bed. And I'm looking sexy. I got my pajamas on. I got nothing on top. I'm watching TV. She comes to bed wearing her nifdiko. I said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm coming to bed. I went, oh. Isn't that adorable? Listen, this bed is for Greeks who are 90% or better. <laughs> and it just doesn't seem that you made the cut. Your bed is in the attic, honey, okay? Make sure. So when I removed the pandofa from my ass, yeah. it was a beautiful <laughs> night that night. <laughs> it was. So Classic. sit there, she goes, <laughs> she was like, she was so, she was so pissed. For yeah. years, she was wow. pissed about this. I'm <laughs> That's like, brilliant. And I'm like, hey, baby, this is what it is. You know, don't be upset about it. But the thing is, as Eliness, I am proud. When you hear about philosophy, when you hear about architecture, when you hear about all the things that we have given the world, it was from our forefathers. And Definitely. from our forefathers, we should be proud that they, too, were geniuses. We're talking about Hippocrates. 100%. You know, they yes. still give the Hippocratic Oath. There was not Italian. It wasn't, uh, this is Mario's quote that he said, uh, yeah, save the bastard if you can. No, Hippocrates <laughs> wanted, he gave the world medicine. Definitely. Philosophy, Plato, yeah, yeah. Even Socrates. Even actors, I read the other, they, oh. call them, they call them thespians. Yep, so I, After Thespius, the first so actor, ever known actor. Absolutely. He stood on, a, what was it, a, a crate or something, and he started acting certain people's roles. And Yeah, today we call them Malakas. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> yeah. okay. Some so, Malaka on a soapbox <laughs> down in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, eh, Malaka. <laughs> and they thought it was a woman, and they thought she was a lesbian. Lesbian, lesbian, eh, man. Okay. Let's voice it. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, it was always like, a, you know, a, a pleasure to be Greek. And, and it was kind of funny because a lot of people in my high school, yes, I played sports. And as soon as I was done with my athletic events and stuff, I took off to go to the Greek church because mm -hmm. I was involved in Goya, which is the Greek Orthodox Youth Association, or I was involved in church functions and stuff like that. So we were always close to the church that way. And to me, that was very, very, very important. Mm. A lot of parents today don't really give simasia to what you should kind of do with your kids. I'm not telling you how to raise your kids, but sometimes there are things that you need to take the kids to. My daughters, to hear my daughter Katarina, my youngest one who's a school teacher, sing the epistle, to hear her sing, and psalisi as well. So she will go ahead, and for weddings, she will go ahead and be the psalti for the wedding. Wow. So she has such a gorgeous voice. Mm. How does a kid who's born in America, who does all that, but fell in love with the Greek faith, who fell in love with you know being Greek? My daughters are dance instructors. Zacharula, the eldest one, is one of the, bands, one of the best dance instructors in the United States. Wow. She's one of top 10 instructors really and what, what music oh what my genre? god you name it could be island it doesn't matter it could hip hop be, and all that if you, you name it whatever it is wow. um she knows the dances to it so we had a costume maker who created the costumes and everything so mm. we we're always involved uh, a lot of people always ask when you do your greek show the growing up greek in america series yeah what do you do i said i'd usually do that for for greek churches and greek organizations within sure and they go, why? I said, because it's important for us to be able to hold on to our traditions, mm. to be able to do certain things. Now, look, I have nothing against the modernization of certain things to do, be more modern and more efficient in a lot of different ways. But not everything's going to be using this. Yeah. I know it sounds strange because I'm in the entertainment industry for so long, but I love... And I love being on stage, but you know, I will purposely take a 5 a.m. flight to get back home to Wilmington so I can make it in time to hit a little bit of church. Mm. It fulfills me. That's just the way I roll. Everyone is different, mm. and I don't judge them for that. So yeah. for me, it's, you know. Yeah, and I know you do hit the churches here as well when you're, I do. When you're here. I do. Yeah. yeah, I actually go to church. and uh, We went together, if you remember. I correctly. think, yeah, we did. Uh, it, was it here, though? It was, was here. It church? Do you, I don't remember. We, I took him to St. Spirit on church that, that well, there year. There you go. And I, you know, so I do love going to church. It, it, I feel um, a cleansing. Yeah. I feel a cleansing. Sure. But again, I'm not a holy roller either. Mm. 
you know, I use language. I love to drink. I love to have a good time and party. But I also feel the big guy is do some visitation once yeah. in a while, right? Yeah. It's a good way to you put go, it. Yeah, I don't want to go to hell. Uh, listen, yeah. I know I'm going to hell. I just want speed bumps. <laughs> yeah. You know, just slow. <laughs> slow down <laughs> ah, Another speed bump. Oh, yeah. I see that. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> you know. Classic. So for me, that's 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 the way mm. I roll. Yeah. You know, so my daughters yeah. are the same way. My wife's the same way. And that's just what we do. Mm. Yeah. So I want to take it back to your parents. You yeah. mentioned your mum was from Ikaria. Right. Your dad is from Mandaros. How did they meet? And how did they? why did they end up leaving Greece? Okay. Is there a story behind okay, that? Yeah, when did they get story. to the state? So my mother, as I told you, was American born. Oh, right? Okay, that's right. She was American born. Correct. So I asked my father, you know, I said, you know, how did you and mom meet? Ah, uh, Basile. I met your mother. We, 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 we met. We fell in love. In 11 short days, we got married. Ah, oh, bravo. Okay. Asked my mom some time later. Mom, how did you and dad meet? Oh, my God. We met. We fell in love in 11 short days. We got married. Okay. Consistent. Okay. Well, I was like, oh, okay. Now years go by. Dad, how'd you meet mom? Uh, yeah. We met. We fall in love. In 11 short days, we get married. That's okay. That's, okay. That's my dad. My mom, same thing. 11 short days. We got married. We met. Fall in love. 11 short days. So one day, I'm going through some old paperwork. I said, and I found this paperwork. one. hmm. I said, Dad, one more time. How did you meet Mom? Ah, yes. We met. We fall in love. In 11 short days, we got married. I said, is there any coincidence on the 12th day you were getting deported? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Classic. you know. <laughs> Classic. I love that story because it's true. It's so wow. true. And, uh, yeah, by, by Dad, it was like, really hey, good Xeris, uh, no me zocati ti mame. <laughs> So, you know, the story about my dad is, uh, it's a great story. And, uh, but they did meet, they did fall in love, and in 11 days they got married. They worked hard. I've never met harding working people, harder working people than my parents. They gave me the work ethic, because you guys know, it's not easy being on the road the whole time. Yeah. You know, Different. I'm on the road in an airport in and out. We're discussing some of the stuff that goes on sure. in the airports and stuff like that. So you're always like running all over the place and you're getting here, you're getting there. And they go, base, Jesus, I mean, you ever get tired? I say, yeah, but I can't think about that. I got to keep yeah. on going, going, going. You know when I'll rest when I'm laying down like that. That's it. Then I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll rest. I'll have a long rest. It'll be good. <laughs> yeah. I'll wither away. I'm going to lose a lot of weight, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to be great, you know. So, yeah, I, to me, I, I've never, hardworking people, my dad worked his ass off. Mm. He had a restaurant because we're Greek and that's what we do, you know. And um, similar thank story you, meet, here. Meet the Greek, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you know, but it's just like you guys, mm. and the stories are the same with you. Now, my mother does come from the island. Okay, her parents both, yeah. you know, Cariotas. Uh, they can't, and Icaria, we're the blue zone, mm. exactly. where people live to be in their hundreds. I was gonna say, did they make the hundred? Yeah. Well, my yeah. yeah. Still yeah. living, 106 years old. Wow. My grandfather is 105. They Holy talk shit. about the will. We don't know why they're never going to die. Mm. <laughs> We've tried everything to kill them. They won't go down. I'm telling you, we tried poison. Nothing. Nothing works on it. Even so it's yeah, a, yeah. Baño. Let me get the toaster. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> so, so it's the great grandkids that are going to inherit it. <laughs> Evidently, if they're lucky. Evidently, we're not going to see Skata. Yeah. You know, so, so um, yeah, they're. Marvelous, marvelous people and stuff. Uh, uh, parents, marvelous, they're just great. And my my in laws are fantastic as well. My petera, like I told you, it comes from the mainland. Mm. And my petera from Icaria as well. You know, and the Cariotas. I mean, we have the story. You know, Icaros, the Enderlos together. You know, escape King Minos from Crete from building the maze, and Icaros put together these feathers that he found and made wax and he flew too close to the, to the sun. sun his wings melted and Icaros fell on the island of Icaria what were the chances it could have been Patmos <laughs> yeah. it could have been Samos <laughs> <laughs> he fell on Icaria evidently he saw that big thing Icaria yeah. right on top of the island hey, I'm right where I need to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to me it was always um, fun you know being I carrying of course we are the oldest and second largest Greek organization in the United States, AHEPA, which is the American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association, is the second oldest 
and the largest. Mm. And for my Heppin brothers out there, you got to come and catch my show. By the <laughs> way, all of you who are listening to this right now all over the world, when you see me, I want you to come catch your show because I love my Heppin brothers and sisters. You know why? Because they raise millions of dollars for good works that they do. Mm. You know, they do stuff all over. They have scholarships for kids. Yep. They have everything. Definitely. There's fires in Greece. They first ones to come up with yeah. $250,000 to yeah. give to them, if not more. Mm. You know. we, we had them on the show. We had one particular on the show, and they definitely listen. Well, they're just up up the road, aren't they? Their office. Yeah. Oh, they see, have, they, I, yeah. the Ahepa Brotherhood to me is uh, important. I've been in Ahepa for many, 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 many years. Well, she tells my dad. Yeah, yeah. and I, I love the organization, and yeah. I do a lot of Ahepa events to help raise money mm. for fundraisers. And again, like I said, any Greek organization within the church, I try and do as much as I can. There's because you know I have two different shows. I had the American general audience show, then I got the Growing Up Greek in America show, mm. and this is the first time coming here to Australia where I'm combining the two together. Mm. So there's going to be a lot more of my Anglico program up yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot, you know, a lot of craziness and a lot of new Greek material and stuff like that that people Can't haven't wait. seen. So. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. Well, maybe we should talk about that now that we now that you've brought that up. So, tell us a little bit about that mix between the shows now. So, obviously, you've done shows in the past, as you said, that are specifically for the non-Greek audience, and then there there are the the Greek for the Greek yeah, audience, the Greek right. ones as well. How have you decided to blend these together? Is like, obviously that must be a conscious decision to say, "Fuck yeah. this," it's wanna, all the same. I want to have some fun, mm. right? When my yeah yeah. 10 years ago, eight years ago. And it's funny, even to those who are not Greek, and you know, she called me out, Vasily, I said, Tia, and I said, Kriyazme Wifi. Tia, Wifi. And I'm like, and I have to talk to myself like my grandmother to try and figure out what the hell she's saying. Wifi. You want Wi Fi? Ne, to Kriyazme, to Wifi. Why? <laughs> Why do you want Wifi? Get the fatsa buka. <laughs> <laughs> you want Wi-Fi for net to Thelo. You want Wi-Fi. You want Facebook to Thelo to Facebook. Yeah, but your friends are dead. Don't you understand? You have no friends. <laughs> Who are you gonna Facebook with for God's sakes? So my grandparents have been married for like eighty-six years, eighty-seven uh, years. Yeah. And the people, you know, and I look at talk to my family. So you know, what, you know, they're like, "What do you get them?" After 87 years, yeah. you have the silver anniversary, the golden anniversary, 87. I don't know, a coffin? I have no yeah. freaking idea. What the hell do you get them, for God's sakes? You know, so I wound up, so I said, okay, you want Facebook, all right. The what? The Milo. And you want a mirror. And I went, you, you want an Apple phone? You never had a cell phone before. Totelo, amor, totelo. <laughs> okay, out of my program, I think I got her the seven or the six. I yeah. can't remember. I got her the extra large yeah. one so she can see the screen, yeah. you know, because it was up to my eye. I should be looking at this part. Then we left, then we left for tea, but, you know, so, so yeah, I yeah. could see her do that. <laughs> so I said, okay, out of my, I didn't want her on my program or my settled, you know, and I'm like, no. I said, I'm going to get you your own thing. All right. Nah, all right. I taught her how to do it. I programmed the phone for her put everyone's pictures in there, did everything, their numbers, their email addresses. Not that she knows how to email, but what the hell, I put it all in there. Three days later, she calls me from her home phone. And I'm like, Dina, the son of my bitchy telephone, she no work. What do you mean she no work? She no work. Hello, click. I'm a study. Hello, click, click, click. Oh, my God, she's hanging up on people. <laughs> I'm like, shit. I go to her house. I look at her phone. She has 175 pictures of her ear. Classic. <laughs> Okay, so I'm like, okay. So a few days later, I'm evidently I sat on my phone and I called Yaya. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even pick it up. So about an hour later, she goes, My telephone says, No, I did not call you. I did not call you. And I'm looking at my phone, I'm like, ah oh, shit. Yaya, I butt called you. I butt called you. Tobacco. To the average tobacco. Tobacco in tobacco. And I'm trying to figure out a way to make her under to make her understand. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know how to say it in any way but this. I said Ogolos muse telefonice. And I swear to God, she goes, Ketithele. 
Να σου πει χαιρετίσματα. Why are you shitting me? What do you want me to tell you? you know? So ever since then, I said, oh, yeah, just yeah. do not mix them, you know, old people with modern technology. <laughs> But you know what? I give her credit for at least trying. I give her credit for trying. You know? 100%. Mm. And, and they just, you know, like I said, man, they won't go down. They refuse to die. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, would you, would you stop talking about, Olaf to in Itikasu. Yeah. No, no, not so much. Bote. Because you're yeah. never, I'm going to die before yeah, you yeah. die. Okay. <laughs> so she is actually uh, just wonderful. Yeah. Classy. They're wonderful. But love it. Those, my, my grandparents on my father's side both passed away. Mm. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm allowed to talk about it a little bit. I wrote a story about my grandfather. Okay. That my dad told me in 1975 when my Bapu died. And it stuck with me. It made me cry as a 15-year-old buff kid that could tear your head off. It made me cry. And I never forgot that. Mm. And I was pittering around and just writing notes. You know, what would I call a story like that? And how would I do this? And blah, blah, blah. I wrote this synopsis about this story, how I saw if I, if I did a story like this, what would it be like? Uh, it started in May of 41. And that period of turmoil that we had in Greece mm. right after the, uh, the battle of, uh, of Greece would happen in Athens. It was the air battle in Greece that they had in May of 41. And that's when the Germans basically came over, the Bulgarians and the Germans came over. And I just started writing this story. And I said, well, that would be cool. You know, I got like 65% of the story that my dad told me. Mm. But every time I asked my pop about it, I didn't think about it. Exactly. So, you know, I'm like, okay. All right, Pop. So I created, I kept on going and writing and writing. So I showed it to a couple of people. I said, man, this is really a phenomenal story. You should do something with this. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm so busy. I mean, I'm doing my stand-up all over the world. I'm doing character voice commercials. I'm doing this for Japanese anime. I'm touring here, touring there. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Among other things. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, Just I'm, as a I'm, side I'm, note. Yeah, Malaka would be one of them. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, so anyway, I wound up going ahead and I'm like, okay. And I wrote this story. And one thing, this gentleman I told you about, George Veras, who is mm. also George Veras, he was the one who produced Yanni at the Acropolis. You ever see Yanni at the Acropolis? It was a wonderfully produced about 30 years ago. Okay. Linda Evans, her boyfriend slash husband was Yanni, this piano player and stuff like yeah. that. And he did Actually, at the Acropolis. Yeah. So you probably mm. may have seen or heard of it and may have forgotten. Anyway, George produced that. He's the executive producer of the NFL Today. He has okay. written, if you Google him, you'll probably see a lot of stuff with George Veras, V-E-R-A-S, has done. So George is a fan of mine. Not that he outgoes, oh, my God, Basil. No, he's just, hey, Basil, what's happening? What's going on? Because he's the one who got me my first Emmy nod, mm -hmm. right? So I'm very respectful. Hey, George, what's happening? Not much. And I said, great. And he goes, hey, what do you got? I know you're working on something. He mm -hmm. says, I can smell it. What are you working on? I said, well. He just had his birthday a couple of days ago. Was it his birthday? Yeah. So George was also the CEO of the NFL Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Wow. So anyway, I sent him this synopsis. It's a seven-page synopsis. A synopsis is basically an outline of a story that you're going to do or whatever. Just give you a basic background. And I sent it to him. He calls me up 45 minutes later, and he goes, um, I want this. Wow. And I said, uh, yeah, but I'm not, can I share this with someone? He wasn't going to tell me who. And I said, sure. Um, just have him sign the NDA like I had you sign, um, which is a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay, and he said, not a problem, took care of that. We're going back and forth, and he goes, his friend calls me. I'll tell you who his friend is. He calls me up, and he says, hi, my name is Michael Pollack. Do you remember Sidney Pollack, the director, producer, and everything? It's his nephew. Sidney Pollack died seven years ago. Mm -hmm. He took over the studios. He goes, I love this. Do you have the screenplay? And I said, I don't have right this second. And he goes, how long do you need? I said, I have to go over my facts, double check everything, my dates. I'm extremely anal when I write. That things have to be a certain way because if you have one off date, then it screws it up for me. Yep. Mm -hmm. like okay. Chain of events. Yeah. So yeah. I have to be accurate with everything that I do. Yeah. And next thing you know, he's like, okay. Um, I said, can you give me like to the end of summer? And he goes, yeah. 
So I finished it up around I don't know, 15th of September. I was done. And then I did a quick rewrite. And my rewrites take a little bit longer. And I'm sitting there and I'm going. So I finished the first, uh, the first draft, the second draft. And I did a third draft just to make sure I was going through everything. Make, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I sent it to him. And the guy read 155 pages of a script mm. in a matter of three hours. Wow. Calls me up. He goes, I want this movie. So we just signed an option deal and development wow. deal for this movie. And I said, how much do we have to go ahead and change this movie? He goes, hardly anything at all. So now I'm a novice when it comes to which, writing a movie. I mean, that's script. rare. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right? So I'm yeah. expecting, oh, well, we got to tear it apart and take this year. And do, you know, that's what I was expecting. I'm like, okay. And one thing so led to another. This is a movie about this your is a movie grandfather. About, that's about like my grandfather. an audit biography, essentially. And it's going to be made into a movie, you think. Or well, it's getting, it, looking that way. I mean, I signed that. They already have financiers who are financing. Oh, yeah. And we're talking about a project that will probably run somewhere between 30 and 40 million. You're kidding kid you not us wow so that, that would be, be roughly huge. about 60 65 million australian right is it yeah is it going to be at a cinema or is it going to be like netflix and stuff i like that? i that i don't know okay see i would rather have netflix come in and just say we're going to give you 80 million dollars because if you only have a 30 or 40 million dollar you can play with that other 40 million and give it to the people that put it together mm. all right so i have a company called spice rack entertainment and mm. Spice Rock Entertainment is the production company that's involved. So now I'll be involved in with Pollock Films in association with Spice Rack Entertainment. Wow. I'll have my own executive producership and stuff like that. So it gives me, you know, people say, you know, what is the end game? I don't know if there is an end game for me, but man, I'll tell you what. You know what I see me doing? Inviting you guys on my yacht somewhere in, in Andros, <laughs> smoking cigars and drinking some of that beautiful... Well, you Mystica. know, Mystica yeah. over there. That's like what I see. One oh, phone man. call. Oh, man. One there. phone call. <laughs> <laughs> We're, We're there. there. We're in. Take us a day to get there, but we'll get <laughs> but there. we'll make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a full day, 24 hours, yeah, you said, true. right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that was because Mate, congratulations. I love, thank oh, you. Yeah. I love yeah, my amazing. family, and I love everything that they have done. But what I love, you wrote the word, one of my favorite words, Filotimo. Mm -hmm. Filotimo is one of those words that you can't describe. It comes from within. Yep. It comes from within the soul, right? And I tell people this all the time. It comes, I don't care if you're a young kid, uh, mid age, elderly, Filotimo. What keeps us all going? Kindness. Mm. Uh, you know, when you always hear, you know, Lico Anthropos, you know, yeah. You know, I'd doing? rather be Lico than bitter. Yeah. I'd rather be screwed over because I was kind to someone than just being an asshole yeah. to people. So I always tell people that all the time. I said, yeah. be careful what you do yeah. and what you say. And, what, you know, and yeah, I do respect the big guy upstairs. Yeah. And I'm not talking sounds... your kids, Bandali upstairs. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm right. talking. <laughs> The big guy. The big guy. He makes me look today. like a puny yeah. little, yeah. you know. So <laughs> now that sounds amazing. So this is going to be a story about your grandfather starting World War II, and it's going to be mainstream. That's important. It doesn't really have many Greeks in the mainstream sort of. You space. hear, you hear the stories. You always hear about you know the stories of what happened in various villages and stuff like mm. that when the nazis came with the italians came and stuff like that now my my father and uncle jimmy my father's brother who's still living my uncle jim and he goes you know the germans weren't bad the germans were businesslike mm. you know yeah we're gonna take you have 10 chickens we're gonna take five and we're gonna leave you with the other five okay the goats we have a herd of goats we're gonna take five goats keep the rest the itali we're sons of bitches. Really? really? The Italy. In Andros. Now, switch that around to Icaria. Mm. Now there, you had the Waffen SS mm. in Icaria, who were sons of bitches. They were the SS. Mm. Yeah. And they were terrible. The Italy, the Karens loved them. Mm. It was a switch. So mm. everyone has their own little story. But it took me literally a year and a half to create that screenplay to do the research do you know what it's like to to research on mm. stuff like that you know uh the battle of perea you know in 41 to happen in may you know they're still finding 
uh, English and and German uh, planes in Perea in, in really? the waters there. Yeah, that was the big battle that the English lost Greece at that time. Mm. And, you know, basically when the Italians tried to attack from the Albania, I mean, we pushed the, the Italians back. I think in 1940, I think we pushed them back like 40 miles yeah, into the Albanians. Yeah, Yeah, pushed them right back in the yeah. thing. And they were, we were using World War One weapons that, mm. that were left yeah. over, that they were given to us by the English. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. my relatives were involved with that. So we're from up that way, mm -hmm. but we talked about it in one of our episodes. We did. In particular, I think it was Hill 731, where it was mm. like a modern day of Thermopylae. For about 16, 17 days, they were under, like I think it was a thousand shells, had planes going, Greeks just dug in, and then for 17, 18 days, they stopped, well, I think it was 17 raids, they stopped all these raids, one after the other of Italians coming in to the point where they ran out of ammunition and then they were using rocks, the butt of their guns to, to send the Italians back. They described it like uh, Thermopylae, but they, the Greeks never lost. The Italians retreated and that was it. We went into, Al that was in Albania, that war. And then we pushed them all the way back to the Adriatic and yeah. then Hitler got the shits. You, know, you guys were meant to take over. So he stopped his Operation Barbarossa to take the Russians mm -hmm. before winter. So they came in, took them... You know, whatever it was to take over Greece, it took them like weeks to take over Crete, you know. Well, that was the big thing. A lot of people don't understand that the reason one of the major excuse me, one of the major turning points of the Second World War was they needed Crete. They needed Crete because they needed to go ahead and get the submarine bases. They needed that. Back then it was referred to as the back door of Europe's back door. So they needed Crete. And it was a very large island could take care, it was deep enough where they can have their submarine bases in there. So what happened was they took, I think, two months to finally take over Crete. And the farmers were coming out with their wives with pitchforks and axes. And as soon as these paratroopers were coming down, they were annihilating them. Well, they never did another paratroop no, raid again because, because of, of that. Because of that. Heavy losses. Yep. So what basically happened at that time is they wound up going ahead. They were delayed for two months going into Russia. And the German armies, because they went in so late, caught by the storms of the Russian winter storms, winter. and mm. they died. Armies. I'm just talking. I'm talking about four, five major armies of, of Germans that just froze to death. And what they did was, I think they uh, lit Petersburg up in fire, so they burnt it down so they wouldn't have no place shelter. to, to yeah, wow. get any shelter, right? Well, the Russians, there's our retreat. That's what, yeah, they're, they're destroying their city. They just destroyed all the buildings. And, and they did, and man, I'll tell you what. So that's when uh, I think Winston Churchill basically said, you know, of, of the Greeks, uh, Greeks don't fight like heroes, heroes fight like Greeks. Mm. Think about that. Yeah. It's huge. The guy who had the balls to yep. stand up to them and all of a sudden pay tribute to the Elliness. Yeah. You know. And it, he wasn't the only one as well. There were other people. Eisenhower yeah. loved the Greek soldiers. Yeah. You know, and he was the... Stalin the wasn't around long enough to thank the Greeks. We put the quotes up in that video we did that we recently, did for, yeah, for yeah, October 28. Yeah, there were Russians. There were, uh, I mean, Charles Hitler de Gaulle. himself, Charles de Gaulle. Yeah, and Charles de Gaulle was a son of a bitch too because he mm. made it difficult. He really made it difficult in the Second World War to work with the Allies. Yeah, right. You know, because at that time, most of the people mm. in France were with Vichy, mm. okay? And Vichy was working with the Germans. Yeah. And it wasn't for the French underground, mm. okay? And finally, de Gaulle says, okay, let D-Day happen. They had mm. to let him know so we can get the underground to work with everyone mm. on D-Day. Yeah. So you're saying your grandfather was involved in these battles? My grandfather was involved in a way that shows compassion and philotimo. Oh, wow. Okay. Beautiful. That, and I can't give you any more of the story because okay. I'm not allowed to. Before, when I was trying to push this to people, I said, hey, read the synopsis, whatever. Yeah. So there's going to be a press release, I think, within a matter of a week or so. Mm. This just happened about two weeks ago. Beautiful. Wow. Can't wait. So Fantastic. that Friday when I found out the news, it's, uh, I love Grand Marnier. <laughs> uh, yeah, half that bottle was gone. It was a beautiful day. Grand you know, Marnier. One, Grand Marnier, a, a cigar. cigar. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, brother. Beautiful. I'm with yes. you, man. Bam. Cuban. Okay. Yeah. 
That to me is a holiday right yeah, there. Hundred percent. And my wife looks at me, and she comes home because my wife's a jeweler by trade, right? right. So she had a long. What did you do? And she goes, "What happened?" <laughs> well, I'll take a shit down. And I'll tell you. <laughs> So she goes, we got to go out to dinner. Oh, this is going to be an interesting dinner, honey. <laughs> so I told her she congratulated me and everything. So we were like, I was on cloud nine. Mm. So it was something. And to, for me to write high drama, I'm a comedian for God's sakes. Mm. But high drama and especially what's going on now in Gaza yeah. and what's happening with Hamas and everything. When you see this movie, you'll remember this interview and you'll see why it's such an important movie. And for them to jump on it, you know how many, you know how many scripts they read? Mm. Probably one every day. Yeah. Could you and imagine? for him to get back to me, you know, Michael Pollack to get back to me. So I call up George, says, Hey, we need to have a conversation. I said, Oh, God. And he, you know, you're always saying, oh, shit. He's like, ah, You know, yeah, we read it. Uh, nice try. Try again, you know, maybe. <laughs> See you next week. That's yeah. what I'm, yeah. honest to God, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, I'm a comedian. I'm used to bad news. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know my, your jokes suck. <laughs> you know, yeah. okay. Oh, my God. I don't know what to say. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's so funny, some of the, the, the things that go through your mind, and you're always thinking, oh. And then to get that, you know, I literally had to make sure that I locked my office up and turned the alarm on and did everything because I was in a daze. Yeah. And I had to go, okay, door is locked. Alarm is on. You know, garage. Okay, this is great. Okay, great. All the equipment. And so we've been going back and forth with each other, talking. Um, he wanted me to add a little something. I said, sure, I can do that. And he goes, I'm going to leave it up to you. And he says, you write beautifully. And I was like really surprised because, you know, when we write, we try to write funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We try to write funny if it's a bit whatever. It's like, how do you try and be funny? A lot of comedians that they don't want to do comedy anymore because they're afraid of wokeism. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And how things are. So I did this bit I wrote because my sister in law was like, Basil, can you tell the kids the birds and bees? I said, I really don't want to tell the kids the birds and bees. <laughs> I don't make me tell the kids. No, just tell the kids the birds and bees. Please, RG, don't, please, don't make, just tell the kids the birds and bees. I said, okay. <laughs> There are birds and there are bees, and some bees don't want to be bees anymore, and um, they want to get their stingers cut off. And, <laughs> oh. uh, and before they were supposed to pollinate flowers, now they just want to smell the flowers and you know who what bees those are. They're the ones that buzz like buzz. So anyway, so these bees. <laughs> so I'm doing this, and here's my sister on the back. She's like. Okay, kids, thank you, Theo Basil. Okay, let's go. She asked for it. <laughs> she did. Exactly. She truly did ask yeah. for it. I'm like, this is what you want. This yeah. is what you get. And then I told her, I said, the queen bee doesn't want to be known as the queen bee anymore. She wants to be known as that that gives birth to them. And I'm like, okay. And them are the worker bees. And I don't want to be worker bees anymore. They want to be known as the cooperative for the betterment of the hive. <laughs> the birds saw what the hell was going on. The honey went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so people are like coming up to me and says, hey don't you think that was a little risky I have no idea what you're talking about I'm talking about the birds and bees what oh, are you talking shit. about you know yeah. so you know who had it right do you remember the Adams Family when we were growing up the yeah, television show the yes. Adams Family what was the one that was <laughs> that furry it was the hairy little thing they called it what Cousin, cousin It, it. Cousin they it. had no idea what the hell it was but they called it Cousin It point. and then the hand that came out of the box they called yep. it Thing Thing these people were ahead of their time, I'm Thank telling you. you, for God's sake. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Wow, there you go. All oh, right. my gosh. So, to me, that was always great. Yeah. You know, so I... Um, Look, we've got to talk about the wokeism, though, because... Absolutely. In, in comedy now, especially over the last few years, I won't say that it started with the slap at the Oscars, because it was happening well before that, but the threat of getting cancelled and yeah. the threat of all, all, of all this kind of stuff yeah. now, how real is it for you, who's on stage... Often are comedians far more conservative nowadays? Do you think in the, in their approach? You know the thing is, first of all, if you remember my show when you came and see my show, I don't really talk about stuff like that. I talk about what goes on in the family and how I get the shit end of the stick. Yep. Okay. 
Um, I thought, You'd probably be the exception to the rule. Yeah, really. I re- to be honest with you, I have. Mm. And I've opened up my wings. And listen, if you are a man, but you f- identify as a woman, bravo su. Yeah. Go ahead. Now, here's my only issue. If you are a man and you identify as a woman, but you still have your manly parts, you got to go to the men's room. Because you see, I have daughters. And there are people who like compete. There are men who compete in female games, which is completely wrong. It's just completely wrong. I'm not being offensive. I'm not being, I'm just telling you, if you still have your manly parts and you still are, are taking hormonal shots, you weren't born that way. Structurally, we have that one swimmer. Um, I forgot his name now. Michael. Um, Michael Phelps. Felt, no, not no. Michael Phelps. He was the, uh, this is the one who was a college swimmer. Six foot four. Yep. He identified as a woman and he wants to go ahead and swim. Uh, no, because I'm sorry. If you Leah identify, Thomas? yeah, that was her. Beat the number one girl in the NC2A's uh, National Collegial Athletic Association, right? So I'm sorry. No, there are female games and there are male games. And if you're a talented athlete, it's like, okay, assume that we had Michael Jordan in his heyday. Mm. He identifies as a woman. And now he plays in a WNBA. He scores on average 300 points a game. <laughs> just say. It yeah. was an off night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it was an off <laughs> night for him. Yeah. Now, do we allow him to do that? Think about it, folks. I'm not telling you, you can do whatever you want. You want to add body parts, subtract body parts. You want to do this, do that. But look, leave well enough alone. Let these kids participate against their own sex and go on. If you don't want to tell your child what sex they are and you want them to make that judgment call, who's hurting? It's the kid. If the kid grows up, listen, I have gay people in our family. Okay. All right. Now, do I tease them? Yes. I'm merciful. I'll just sit there. You know, how's it, you know, you know, how'd you ever try to go on this side of the fence, you know, and give it a shot at you before you made a, you know, did you ever? And, but I also do it lovingly. Yeah. You know, where it's a little bit of cheek and gum, you just sit there and give them a little nod. And my cousins love me, and I love them. So I don't begrudge anyone who's gay. If you want to dress as a woman and be trans. Okay, you go for it. You be that. You do you. You do you. Very good. <laughs> very, very good, Tom. You do you. Whatever <laughs> it is, you do you. Now, me, I would make an ugly woman. I'm just telling oh, yeah. you. <laughs> I'm not an attractive man, for God's sakes, okay? <laughs> I mean, I can't get laid in prison. I told you this before many times. You know, they're like the boys in cell block C didn't even want to look at me in the shower, for <laughs> God's <laughs> sakes. So I try to go... Oh, what is Sasquatch doing in here? <laughs> yeah, you can drop the soap a lot of times, Basil. No one's coming to you. You're good, man. You're good. <laughs> so, so to me, it's always been a lot of fun to you know to goof off yeah. with with them because you know, look, how many gay people are in my general community of entertainers? What? Probably half. Yeah. Okay. Probably yeah. half. And I will sit there, and they gave me hell for for being, you know, for heterosexual, and I give them hell for being gay. And yeah, I love them. I love them because I don't mean it. And they can do whatever they want with their bodies and do whatever. There was a a kid, and my daughter, she was in high school at that time. Now she's an eighth grade teacher, four Mm. years. And this kid was a boy who identified as a woman, and school allowed him to go to the ladies' room or to the girls' room. Sorry, no. So I protested. I said, if you have another bathroom, let him go to that bathroom. Because what happens if all of a sudden he sees a beautiful young lady and he doesn't feel that way anymore? And that's happened. Mm. Not saying, I'm not, not saying it happens all the time. It doesn't. Yeah. So I allow people to be who they want to be and what they want to be. But let's leave certain things out of it. The United States right now is not acknowledging uh, these athletes to go from gender, to, you know, to other genders and stuff like that, which okay. is about time. So I don't know how it is here in Australia. Yeah, how is it, Nick? I mean, yeah, I there think... have been instances where they where they have where they have been swaps between 
you know, the male and the, the female sports, obviously always going towards the female side. Though. Yeah, sports have come out now and they said, if you're born male, you play. Like we got rugby league, male, female. A swimming come out and said something similar. Mm. Actually, I should look well, in up. New Zealand, for example, there was that weightlifter guy who, who's now competing in the in the female. Um, Are they still doing it though? I'm not sure. It happened though, and the guy won a gold medal somewhere. Because that swimmer was a Terrible. New Zealander, Leah Thomas. And yeah, she was okay. winning everything. Yeah, yeah, I think she'd get a U.S. college and so forth. Yeah, but. and she was in a college swimmer. Yeah, competing in, with the other males mm. and yeah. couldn't get anywhere. Yeah, she was a male swimmer. Didn't get very far. No. She said, well, can and then all of a sudden, a female out of nowhere, I identify as a woman. Well, yeah. good for you, but you can't swim with these girls. Yeah. And compete? No, these girls have yeah. busted their ass yeah. trying to do that. And I don't know. I'm, you know, so if people want to cancel me for that, yeah. okay, dinner soup. Yeah. Mm. You know, my thing is, I'm fair across the board. Yeah. I love you. I don't care if you're gay, straight, trans, whatever. I love you. Yeah. Oh, hell, I might even kiss you. <laughs> Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> Classic. but obviously nothing's happened thus far and you've been doing comedy for how many years oh now? there are going to be people because I you know uh, there is no two ways about it I'm a little bit more conservative politically thinking sure. and believe it or not I worked in Washington so I worked on Capitol Hill I worked for a congresswoman uh, really? Mary Rose Okar okay. who was a Democrat and then I also worked for DOD Department of Defense okay. I didn't have a top secret position I didn't have anything no you know, can you imagine me well, we had former NATO Supreme Allied Commander Admiral James Stavridis on the show not oh, long lovely. ago. Yeah. I don't know if you've met him before. No, you, you know him. He's an absolute champion. No, I, and I think that's great. Mm. I loved working for the government. Apparently, we had him at Uzo. He said, "Yeah, <laughs> did, did we get a little bit tipsy." Hang, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Yeah, that sounded like a hostage situation. There, it was like, <laughs> "I love working for the government." <laughs> Wasn't that good? <laughs> How was it really? Yeah. No, I, I. They're not listening. Yeah. As far as we know. You know someone testing, on the door. Testing. Is this on? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I, I loved, you know, uh, I got a chance to uh, compare <laughs> a weaponry that was back in, 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 in Central America um, during. I don't know if you guys know too much about. The, we were involved in El Salvador and we were doing certain things. And my job was to compare for every dollar that we gave uh, Belize. I would do comparisons. Every dollar we gave Belize, we gave El Salvador three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars. Right. Uh, if for every dollar that we did, you know, so I would run these comparisons and ratio counts. That was, was that it. Part no. of the movie American Made by any chance? No. No. I no. mean, not. Okay. No. No. Okay. I, I had nothing to do with you know. Because if you mention movies, we probably know, but yeah. yeah. We get I, all of our religious stuff from Cecil B. DeMille movies, by the way. That's how we know stuff. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm more like the gangs of New York. That's what <laughs> yeah. I am. Okay. Uh, no, so, I no, I, I actually uh, loved working for the government. I went to law school. And, uh, really? yeah, I went to law school for, for a year. And um, when you confuse torts for French pastry, you have to give it up in uh, some sort of a way. And uh, uh, my mom was ill. So I took a sabbatical and never really went back. Mm. It was a unique time for me. And there were a lot of things. But you know what? Um, on a serious note, I lost my mother. Okay, I, I've lost my mom. And if I would have seen how my mom passed today, you wouldn't be interviewing me as a as a comedian. You'd be interviewing me as a doctor. Really? All yeah. right. Yeah. I just I hate. When how I old see. were you? I was pretty young, um, twenty six when I lost mom. But see, what I do is I always have her and my father on my mind. Uh, everyone in my family that you know. And I keep them alive in my shows. Mm. You know, it just, to me, it's just something that's special to me. So they're not really passed on. Mm. Yeah. They're still here with me, yeah, which me tells on. me that I have a lot of issues that I have to deal with as I, you know, mm. psychological what's, anyway. Well, yeah. well, what's your mom's name? Zacharula. Zach ah, mm. your daughter. Zacharula. Beautiful. And my father, Zani. Zani. Okay. And uh, how I didn't be, be named Zongango, I have no idea. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny names. I remember coming here, and I remember one of the f stupidest jokes I ever did. I, you know, I said, yeah, my, my wife's from here. She's uh, half Greek, half Aboriginal. Everyone, <gasps> and I said, her name was Kula Bula Bula. And <laughs> you got stupidest thing. You guys were laughing at that shit. Yeah. I'm like, really? Kula yeah. Bula Bula. That yeah. did it for you? Yeah, it was, it was going to be Gulagan, but it didn't have the yeah. same yeah. <laughs> same ring to it. <laughs> so, 
she, you know, because I have I have so much respect um, for for people and their names and who they are, and you know, you hear these great stories of how people escaped, you know, the communists and the you know right after um, the Second World War that happened, mm. and in Nicaria, it was pretty heavy. I mean, mm. we're, we they were still referring to us as the Coquinoni Sea. Really, unique mm. idea. A lot of heavy influence on on mm. uh, communism. Yeah. And my thing is, so we had it in Ipiro too, and in Ipiro as well. Yeah, huge. Oh, and then sure. there was a bit where I forget the term they used, but they took a lot of the children. The communists were sure. losing, so they took a lot of the children to the indoctrinate Iron them. Yeah. yeah. Well, they took them over to the Iron Curtain. A lot of them end up in Hungary and uh, mm, yeah, really? Albania and so forth. Yeah. But since we did that, was it Mark Burris's episode? Well, it's one of the episodes we talked about it, and we got heaps of mail on it. And one of them said, yeah, my dad was one of those people. Wow. And yeah. Wow. But they did say it wasn't as bad as it sounds because they actually got educated. I think the example I'm thinking of was the guy went to Budapest. They got mm. re- educated really well, and then they ended up coming back to Greece anyway. And, and the person that wrote the story was like a director of a company in Melbourne. So it did ah, sound yes. bad, but um, I think Listen, it was when you lady. lose a child... Yeah. And the child is taken away from you. Yeah. That is probably the most horrific thing that can sure. ever happen. Imagine you and your boys, right? Yeah, or any of our children. You know, yeah. I would kill and yeah. die yeah. for my kids. Mm. Right? Can you imagine what these people went through? Yeah. How, where do they know what's going to happen today? Yeah. I, first of all, there has never been a successful communist country. They always talk about Russia. Russia is socialist. It's not real true communism. Mm. You know, people say, well, what's, what's the difference in socialism and communism? I said, you know, you, you do the work and find mm. out. I know the differences. I'm not going to go into it. This is not an intellectual discussion, mm. you know, especially with you two. Well, so, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah, the power of this bottle. Well, uh, there's no two ways. I, I, I need a little bit and a little bit here for a second. We're going to get yeah. below like the mati, right? Yeah. yeah. A little bit more of the mati, please. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so... To me, to be able to um, thank you, my brother. Thank you. You want some eyes with that? No, you sure. good. I like it the way it is. I'll get to you. Go, Nick. Neat. The uh, it's very, yes, neat. Have it nice and neat. I prefer it this way, actually. Yeah, mm. me too. Oh, I just love smelling it. it yeah, it's go. delicious. Yamas, oh, yamas, brother. Geez, boy, this. Yeah. Oh. And for all those who are watching, this yeah. is to you. <laughs> oh, it's good. It is better. It's neat. good. It doesn't. It's not biting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's not that harshness. Very smooth. That's yeah. Very smooth. Yeah, that was, you know, that was, uh, I was a political science guy. Yeah. And uh, I love politics. Really? I love discussing politics. So I can mm. hold my own and really? talk to what's going on. Well, this some is your things, space. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it uh, talking about some of the things that are going on in the United States right now. Some of the craziest mm. stuff that I've ever mm. seen in my life. Uh, what's what's going on with wokeism and stuff like okay. that? So on that, maybe yeah. just give us some. Uh, so what, what's happening now in the states? That... In the states, and listen, the, the country is completely split. The country is completely split. They see what, fifty fifty or sixty forty. What, I, what's you know, right now, if you were to add, I'm not a big fan of our current president. I respect him for he is our president. Mm-hmm. He was elected. Uh, I don't know if there was cheating going on. I don't. I'm not a prescribe to any of that garbage to be quite honest with you yep. i respect anyone who is elected the great thing about australia you don't have another country that you're bordered with you're your own independent continent slash country all right the united states and north america north america is comprised of canada to our north and mexico to our south okay to be able an actual country you need to have borders that are completely established and we have allowed probably or close to 2 million people during the Biden administration. About two-thirds have not been vetted. Um, so what does that mean? Vetted, vetted means they have not done any inspection as to who they are, where they came from. Okay. Do they have criminal records? Do they have any of this stuff? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And they just... Walked. And they go, they come in, they take their name, and they said, you got to appear before a court in three years. Do you really think they're going to show up? No. Wow. I don't begrudge anyone. So is that all you need to get from Mexico no, to the U.S.? No, of course US? not. Oh. No. They just allowed him in. Oh, my God, they're having hard issues. Well, you mm. know what? So are we yeah. in the United States. 
Because I've read stories in New York now, there's so many immigrants taking over on hotels the floor, now. On the ground, sitting outside, taking over hotels. Is that the truth? It's the truth. Because we don't know what bit to believe anymore, everything we read here. But and, the, and the press sometimes is complicit with, with yeah. the administration. They don't look. They don't like Trump. Mm. The press doesn't. No. They, they hate him. Look, I'm not going to tell you that I love the guy, but I yeah. liked his policies. Mm. They made sense. You know, if there was an issue, and I'm not a Trumpster, please don't sit there. Yeah. Oh my God, he's right. No, am I conservative? Yes, yeah. But I am also. I'll do anything to help my fellow man. Mm. Now, these people, the only thing they have to say is, "I'm being oppressed in my country." All right, come on in. Yeah, is it true now? Biden has said he they want to complete the wall now in Mexico. No, what no, Biden wants true. to do is, when Trump came in, Trump did about maybe a couple of hundred miles of wall. But that of that couple of hundred, there was about 135 miles of wall that fell apart that he had to redo. Okay. And there was about another 70 miles or something that he did that was new wall. Mm. You got to establish some type of a border. That's mm. all there's to it. Yeah. You know. Well, we have you, one here, you know, makes sense. Yeah, where's your border at? Well, we got water borders, so we get we get ships well, from, from the Indonesia States, like New South in. Wales. No, we get we get a lot of people come illegal immigrants coming from Indonesia because we got well, a lot we of do have a border of sorts. We've got the rabbit proof fence uh, right yeah, in the middle. True. Yeah, keep, keep the dingo. That's that's not a joke. That's that's for real. <laughs> You guys, it's, you guys lose it's your just minds. just chicken wire. You guys lose your minds if, in case you bring fruit over and there's a titi <laughs> fly somewhere. You know, I'm like, do you have a titi fly with you? No, I don't have a titi fly. Not that I had one. I had one. I may have had one earlier, but not tonight. You know. So, I got to be really careful because I'm here on a visa, and I got to be be very nice. I was messaging him yesterday. Yeah. He was going through customs at the time. That's right. You're and I see. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I'm going through my cavity search as we speak. And I said, just give, up the, just give up the Rigani, mate. No, it's okay. I told him, I said, they're going a little bit deeper than usual for my cavity search. <laughs> and they go, can you explain this? Yeah, that would be my liver. And the other thing is the kidneys. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we digress. Yes, we digress. So you got a hard time coming in, did you? No, not at all. Okay. No, I did it the right. I always do everything the right way. Mm. I don't have uh, any type of a criminal record. I've never been been associated with any hate group or any group whatsoever. I don't protest. If I do protest, I let my protest become with a vote. Mm. That's what I do. Mm. So in the United States right now, the the Biden thing is just it, it's 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 a bit much, and I don't do ageism. Mm. If a person is ninety years old and he's sharp, he is a sharp ninety year old. Mm. Got no problem with that. I just, his policies, uh, that, that really kill me. If, if you have a bunch of Australians that want to work, tell them to come to the United States because there's a lot of open places. And oh, right really? now the government is just supporting people who don't want to work. It yeah. really is terrible. Well, but I, and I also admit, though, I'm not a Biden fan. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't really matter on yeah. that. So. Yeah, look, it's really tough. Cause we, we see clips of him. And the clips we see, unfortunately, he's falling over, or he's tripping over, or he's stumbling his words. Oh, I feel sorry for him. He's getting pressured to do something, and I don't think he's got... Well, again, it just looks like he doesn't have the capabilities to do some that of his, well. Some of his speeches leave a lot to be desired. And again, he is my president. And although he's my president, I just don't like the policies that this president that we have mm -hmm. is doing. So... Um, but there are, there are a lot of Republicans that are out there who are idiots as well. Yeah, sure. You know, what I do is I, I go, I vote, and that's it. That's all I can do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's good. Well, let's take it back to the comedy now. So, I mean, <laughs> Were we getting too serious? Were we? Maybe a little bit. But, no, no, but that's, that's good. What would you these like to know? These are the, these are the things that are important to you. So. <laughs> it's funny if you're asking Look, questions so I can eat. Yeah, I'm <laughs> It's strategic eating. In the, in the <laughs> yeah, you guys eat. I'll just yeah. say, because I got a camera looking yeah. at me the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, you, you guys sit there and go, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I should. So just, tell me about your present. About that. Yeah, we got all these food for you. Pass the tzatziki. Okay, <laughs> bravo. Tara masala. No, bravo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> me, I'm sitting there like a yeah. kirio. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I remember asking you the first time that we met, are Greeks funny people? And you pointed to your dad. About, you know, hysterical, you know, being someone who, who was funny without even knowing about it. Yeah. To what degree was your dad an influence on your, 
your comedy and the way that you got into the uh, in, into that field? You know, the funny thing is, and you can look at your own kids. When you're with your parea and you see these children who are in their teens and they're sitting there because they want to watch and, and hear you and everything. Keep crunching. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. And... <laughs> Yeah. Anything else crunchier we can give you to eat? Oh, oh, here, here's some potato chips. I had a longer <laughs> arm, but uh, is there some celery we can give you here or something? It's been a so, long day, boys. It's, it's it really good for you. <laughs> so basically, um, it, it's it, it was one of those things where, um, and, and and getting to my dad and my mom, look, they were always very very funny people. But when you have kids joining the parade because they want to see you guys laugh. Yeah, that's the influence, Brad. Mm. That's they want to laugh. Yeah. The, and what would you rather have? Memories of your father laughing or memories of your father taking off his luri and beating the crap <laughs> yeah. out of you? Mm. I'm going to go for the laughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but I'm crazy. Yeah. You yeah. know. So, yeah, for me, it's always been about the laughter. I used to love when my kids would come around. Like when my daughters didn't know that I was engaged before mm. and that I dated a Japanese girl as well. They were like, so my friend Manny, he goes, hey, Kula, when Basil was engaged, and all of a sudden, Zakharul was like, whoa, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> my dad was engaged. When my mom, Kula goes, well, yeah, honey, he was engaged to another Greek girl, and but it just, it just didn't work out. And you just, my wife said, you could just look in her eyes and see that my father was a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, out of that, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and then when did he date the Japanese girl? And then both of them, dad dated a Japanese girl. <laughs> oh my God, he was a hoe. <laughs> oh my God, and he was a hoe. He was like the United Nations of hoes. <laughs> he was going all over. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, to me, it was always like, uh, you know, fun to to be with my parents and them telling jokes and everything because they were funny. Yeah. It's within you. Mm. You can't teach a person to be funny. Yeah. Some people, probably you're more analytical, right? Yep. Yep. Your well personality. Mm. I'm more humorous and a little a- analytical because I loved working for the government and doing yep. the things I did, right? So there is a serious side of me. You, mm. I have no clue what the hell you were, Tom, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. You you have some issues that you need to go through. You know, many. <laughs> so many. Well, you're, you're very artistic. And that's why we sort of get on. Because I'm, mental, I'm sort of left side of the brain. You're right side of the brain. I'm the artistic. musician, the, yeah, the musician, writer. The writer. And... Yeah, but you see, I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love both sides, to be quite honest. Yeah. But it's almost like you two are my brain right now. I have one that's political, one that's the Sacramatis. Yeah, yeah. It's like, beats working. Yeah, uh, it's the shit out of working. Yeah. You, this is work. No. Yeah. So my daughter, Katarina, I take her on a cruise with me, right? So I try to explain to her. So when we're on a cruise, because I'm a, I'm a guest entertainer, I said, I have a lot of car blanche. So mm. when I say, not necessarily when I say, but when I say, I got to do a sound check. A light check, make sure I do all this stuff, and I got to work and do my cruise. And these are large ships with celebrity, so mm-hmm. you're talking an audience of a thousand, twelve hundred per show. per show, right? So I'll do like a half an hour, you know. That's all they want me to do, thirty minutes. So I said sure. And there's Katarina. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Jesus, that's what a whole thirty minutes. 30 minutes. Dad, how do you do it? Yeah. I, like, I want to smack her. Yeah. <laughs> but she's an eighth grade school teacher who has to deal with animals yeah. like, all the time. Yeah. And she's like, how do you do it, Dad? You're going to tell your, you're going to tell your little jokes? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to tell your little jokes? Are you going to tell them in Greek this time or in English? Which one are you going to do it? Oh, who's them? Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I love Dad, her. Dad, when you retire... Well, shit, you don't do shit now. So what the hell I mean? You're retired. Uh, for God's sake. Classic. So she, she make, I tell you, the kid makes weird. me laugh. And Zach yeah. would bust my chops too. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing. I allow that. Some dads would get pissed yeah. off. Yeah, I just <laughs> laugh. You know, yeah. that is brilliant. Um, you just get a pen and paper out yeah, and write and it down. Like, yeah, say that one more time stuff. that it's I don't do material. shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't do shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> you know, so for me. Next show. Yeah. That's it. Dad doesn't do shit. Dad yeah. doesn't do shit. Okay, that's right, kid. So they always hate when I talk about them yeah. when I'm on stage. Yeah. You know, 
And do you do that? Do you workshop their stuff? Once in a while, yeah, I'll I'll do some, but I'll refer to them as my nieces or my cousins or whatever because I don't want to show my age. God forbid, you know. (laughs) So all of a sudden, how old is your daughter? Shh. No, so it's but for me, it's pretty cool where you can actually have some fun and and doing these shows and you take what happens and you throw it and there'll be something that'll happen tomorrow or today yeah. or I'll talk about this show and I said who's I'll talk and uh, we drank which was nice the food that was in front of me I couldn't touch because every day no one wants to see me doing hey, so anyway I'm just sitting there or we can crunch vegetables <laughs> like like some other people here I'm not going to use any names but uh <laughs> I'm looking at this. I'm like saliva's coming down. <laughs> I really, you can eat. There's no issue. There's no, 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 right, no, right, right, no, right. no. I got a camera on me. <laughs> yeah. You can eat. I'm not going to sit there. Yeah. You know. Um, you got a nice white shirt on. I got a nice. Yeah, I'm not going to get this dirty. Yeah. You kidding me? You know what dry cleaners cost here in, <laughs> in Australia? You got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know? uh, so, um, but no, I really love to, to the ability to go ahead and have the conversations that I would have with my dad. And my father was was a great storyteller, and he would just mm. he would uh, dad would just make me laugh, man. Mm. You know, one of the funniest things we had this gandima that we got mm. from uh, Tiesta Brula, and she took this gandima, and during the Second World War, she it was this it was like folded up back then, mm. and it was like six foot across by three foot of the Last Supper. Mm. So I'm like, what the. F-? I thought, but he's not guy. has got to me off door. I said, Dad, this needs a lot of work. Let me, yeah. let me see. So I took it to a specialist, a material specialist. They cleaned it, and it looked beautiful, like it mm. was just made. And then they wound up going ahead, and I said, you know what? Let me go and frame it. Mm. A gorgeous frame, glass over it, gorgeous, just beautiful. The Last Supper. And my father, and we have to, you know, have it in our living room because you know. Putting the Last Supper in the living room, it matches everything. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I'm like, jeez, oh man. So my father comes in the house, eh, bravo, the yeah. Last Supper, eh? <laughs> Aliness. Yeah. And I go, what? <laughs> Aliness. This Last Supper? <laughs> Aliness. Catered by Aliness? Oh, he would catered by Aliness. <laughs> Aliness. I said, oh, see what that's? Aliness. O Yanis Eres, O Christos Eres, Christo, Elines. Yeah. I said, what about Judas? Evreos are the Judas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. Okay, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so my father would come up with these things, and the way he said it. Now, you, as big as I am, as tall as I am, my father was only five foot three. Yeah, right. Really? Dad was only five three. Mom was only five five. So my mom has a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, you know. yeah, but, yeah. And uh, who exactly was our milkman? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. He did build the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, it was always kind of fun to uh, to tease him. My mom was very long legged, and um, you know, and uh, dad was short legged with a long torso. Mom yeah. long legged with a short torso, and I could have been could have gone the other way for me, and I could have played tattoo on Fantasy Island. But. Bus, the plane, the plane, bus, bus, bus. Yes, that too. It's the plane. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you're about, 6'1", six 6'2"? Six uh, if I stand erect, yeah. <laughs> which is good luck you with that. Good back. Yeah. <laughs> maybe pushing like 6'1 and a half, a little, maybe okay. just, just under 6'2". So, yeah, yeah I think I, I shortened up a little bit when I was playing ball. And of course, when I was playing ball, I had my cleats that were like this big. And of course, I come across like looking like six six because I got my helmet cocked up, my shoulder pads and everything. I'm like, mm. okay. Um, and so my father and mother look like little midgets next to me, you know. <laughs> so. so we talked about this before we went on air. So you right. said you got concussion twice, four times, four times, four times, and your concussed. helmet got cracked, cracked twice, two times. Yeah. And gridiron, that is. So. Yeah, gridiron football. Wow. And, and how and old were you at the time? Oh, God. Let me see. Uh, nine, 18, 19, and 20. Wow. And you played at a good standard of gridiron, obviously. Well, yeah. I played college. And you were you like know. a linebacker. I was a linebacker. 
Yeah, yeah. I wow. ran. Because you're uh, a big guy. You're quite solid. Well, I, thank you. That yeah. I think you mean that in a nice way. I yeah, don't know. It could be about I mean. my gut, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, I try to work it down. Before I think I was a lot bigger when yeah. I did your show. Well, me and Tom yeah. sized was, you up as soon as you walked out. I found looks like a front row. I solid. You know. Yeah. So when I when I played, I wish I could tell you that I was a superstar. Yeah. Uh, but but I wasn't. I was a good ball player. You know. I ran 40 yards and my, you know, my times were always a consistent 4.8 seconds, 4.8 seconds, 4. So I was very fast and I could slobber knock the hell out of you, which means I'm going to knock the piss out of you when I play. Yeah, good. And I could cover. I could cover. I could back. I still, believe it or not, I can play, I play tennis. So I'll play on clay courts because it gives me some play with the clay, you know, underneath me. It doesn't really do a lot of damage to my knees because my Mm. knees are Forget about it. Played mm-hmm. on AstroTurf. Yeah, you got you guys should compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> Your knees. Uh, got yeah. No cartilage in one knee, but yeah, we well, he's playing that. the equivalent of flag football, which is called Oztag here, which yeah. is the rugby league version for Greece for the Greek team. You're going away soon. Yeah, before, we are. We got a tournament in uh, December 14th, so we're going to play against Tonga and Samoa and that's, New Zealand that's very Maoris. Cool, yeah, that's very very with cool. no cartilage in his knee. Yeah, in one <laughs> knee. But we've got a really good trainer who's. His goal was to get you there, mm. Peter Menezes. If you end up taking some Advil before the game, <laughs> yep, and then after the game, it should help. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're taking Cipro with us, so we're thinking that might do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> or you can do a couple of shots of Cipro. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> and here we are talking everything. about sports talk. That's right here on Uzo Talk. <laughs> we're talking sports all the time, twenty four hours a day. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Today's subject is cartilage. Yes, yes. or no? <laughs> um, no, when you, you know, you think about the, the things that we go through as athletes, like all my fingers yeah. have been broken at least one time or another. Kidding, wow. Yeah. Thumbs, fingernails have come off. And then I also wrestled uh, in high school and junior high school. I, re- I love wrestling. Love wrestling. Mm. Mano a mano, man. To go against someone else. Who's your same weight class? It's very Greek. Mm. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Mm. I loved it. My father would get so into it. Yeah. He would come to my high school matches. And here's this little guy underneath by the bleachers, the first rung of the bleachers, sitting there going, yeah. <laughs> Give me the not the old. And I'm like, and of Evil course lie. I'm tied up and I'm looking over like <laughs> and I'm laughing. <laughs> and I have to throw the guy to the side. Okay, and I'm like, okay. Uh Wow. Those were great memories. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. were great memories. Um, you know, my 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 dad uh, was a nafti. He, okay. um, you know, uh, was in the Greek Royal Navy. I'm very proud of his service that he did. Um, he was a it's veteran. Amazing. He was. Uh, he took care of us. He was the hardest working man I know, man. Yeah. You know? mm. And I do comedy about him. I write about him because yeah. he makes me laugh. The stories that you know. And he would just sit there and, 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 and give me hell. I remember as big as I am in high school because I was playing, like, I don't know how it works here in Australia. You have mm. ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. Is that Correct. the way it yes. works? Yep. Okay. Hiding. So it's yep. like us. All right. Yep. So as a ninth grader, I was playing varsity football, like the top level. Mm. So I played my six games, the ninth grade team, bypassed the junior varsity team, went straight to varsity. And was playing as a linebacker on special packages, meaning if there was a passing situation and needed someone to cover the flats, that was my job to drop back or whatever. So I was playing at a high level at a young as a young kid. So here's my father. He wants to come into the locker room with the other fathers, and they go, "What's your name?" He goes, "My son is uh, Bezo Kasikis," <laughs> and they're looking at him. They're looking. Who's your son? Bezo Kasikis. Just wait here for a minute. And they walk, go to the locker room. They see Bays. Man, there's a man with a strange accent who's about four foot nothing. They say he's your daddy. Yeah, it's my daddy. No shit. Really, <laughs> man? No shit. You got your daddy, man? Oh, your mom been screwing with somebody because ain't no way that your daddy. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> no shit. 
<laughs> so that's brilliant. yeah, it was it was funny. I mean, but these yeah. are the stories I bring out when I do my shows, yeah. and that's yeah. what one thing I love about this show. Mm. And I want everyone uh, in Australia to come to the shows because, yeah. like I told you, we're hitting all over the place. Yeah. Blame it on a Greek. I know here. I yes, gotta, I gotta us, read this a yeah, little bit. Um, on let me see Thur- uh, Thursday, November second, I'm gonna be at Souths at Juniors. Mm. Great place, South Juniors. Can't mm. gotta go. Them gotta, enough. The <laughs> night after at the Canterbury League Club, we're sold out. Really? Mm. Canterbury yeah. League. Mm. So these are rugby, <laughs> these are rugby league, league clubs. Well, okay, listen. These are rugby league listen, clubs. I'm a do, South Fuck NFL you, team. Stop being yeah. judgmental, okay? <laughs> they sold out the damn show. So shut up, okay? <laughs> so anyway. There's a lot of greats so, out there. Okay, so South Juniors, I want you there. November 2nd, the 4th of November, we're going to be Canterbury's. That's sold out. Saturday the 11th, we're going to be at Mara, uh, Marana Auditorium in Hertzville. Oh, Hertzville, yeah. I'm going to be in Hertzville. Uh, so if you guys want to come and catch us, but the best thing to do is to go and, and check us out. Um, go to uh, Ben Moriana Entertainment, and that's spelled M-A-I-O-R-A-N-A, Ben Moriana Entertainment dot com dot A-U. Fantastic. Yeah, so make great. sure you come and catch the show. How long are you actually here for? You're, you're, you're Dude, here for a I while. I'm here until December, until December yeah. 11th. You're living here now. I'm, I'm living. I got an apartment. I have an apartment. Fantastic. Just overseeing all the Yunekas with their bikinis on. It's beautiful. Down at really? So you don't like winter. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Well, it's not like Following winter. The summer. And if it was like that, that woman would be arrested right now <laughs> for, you know, for losing her mind. No, these women off the beach, man, with Suleoth. Yeah. Oh, you don't need to tell Oreo, us. Oreo prama. Oreo yeah. prama. Na supo. <laughs> to see these women come out and, and they're wearing these bathing suits. It's nothing more than a... You know what floss is? Yeah. That's yes. what it is. <laughs> right? Messy. Oh, Teodoro... But no, okay, good. That's a bathing suit. Yeah, I, I think I flossed with that the other night. Okay. <laughs> Who was it that said it looks like a walrus flossing? <laughs> Some, I can't remember who said it. That's what it I is. I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> hey, uh, it's G- not mine. But G- G- <laughs> Tennessee. Remember Tennessee Tuxedo and, and, and the walrus? There was, there was the penguin and the walrus? Yes. Okay. That, it's kind of funny. I, I talk about... In the United States, we have mascots. Yeah. Okay. And the mascots for the universities are either an animal... Or some type of, you know, something fierce yep. that's going to tear you apart. The state of Ohio, where I lived at one time, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Buckeyes. The Buckeyes. Okay. It's, it's a, a Buckeye? fucking nut. That's what it is. Oh, we had the nut. entire animal to go with. Every animal in the United, in the kingdom, we went with a nut. Okay? Okay. Does the nut have fangs on it or something? No. Or? They know what they got. Well, it's poisonous. Really? Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So then, if you throw yeah. it hard, can it hurt you? Or? Yeah, <laughs> so, it's a weapon. So, yeah, good. So yeah, some of the other things that we have. Okay, the penguins. Yeah, the penguins of Youngstown State. A penguin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Timmy, where do I kick your ass? As soon as I get my flippers over my head, I'm gonna kick your ass. You know? No, it's t- okay. Then you got other schools. All right. Now in California. The mascots are a little bit different. Mm. Okay. There is a Point Paluma Nazarene University, home mm-hmm. of the sea lions. The sea okay. lions. Yeah, How right. intim- Go sea lions. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Are you serious? <laughs> really? He's going to love my team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the best one. It's a little yeah. bit dirty, but it's the truth. Coastal Carolina. Yeah. Coastal Carolina University in Feel Myrtle like Beach, South Carolina. You know what their mascot is? Chanticleers. Go. Now you Chanticleers. people are going, what the hell is a Chanticleer? Chanticleers. It's a rooster. Okay. <laughs> it's a fancy rooster. Well, we have we, one we of those here too. too. Yeah. Tom's loving that because <laughs> I, I do love that. Tom goes for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs. Yeah, but yes. the rabbits look kind of mean, I think. Yeah. Well, f- my, my team is well, a fluffy white you know how pissed off rabbits get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. And their arch rivals are the roosters. Yeah. So you hit right at home with that joke. Exactly. So Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stand each other. It's the oldest rivalry in rugby league. Is it really? It is. Two most successful clubs in the game. See, again, I, I watch... The only game on, I cannot Dragons get into... Second. 
Uh, he won 11 actually, premierships yeah, so in just, a row. Yeah, you're he right. won 16 grand finals. Come on, mate. That's you're true. better than the Roosters. Yeah. Well, sorry, Baze. I had to let's, correct you. I was, being, I was being very generous to them. My apologies. <laughs> boys, boys. <laughs> it's only sports. <laughs> Grow up. Hold exactly. It, there's there's only sports. Wait, what was what was the line? Out of all of the most, what is it? Out of everything unimportant in life, this is the most important. Football is the most important. I it's true. So. And Listen. I think it was the Pope who said that. <laughs> the Pope, yeah. John Paul, in fact. John Paul. Was, yeah. Well, you know, he might be right on that. Yeah. He very well might be right on that. I, I love when I can actually literally go to it. Okay, I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. I uh, sympathize. Yeah. Okay, you, you understand. <laughs> yes. My ulcers have burnt out many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just no longer exist. Yeah. And everyone in my family is a Steelers fan. My wife, so Steelers fan. My daughter, Steelers fan. My other daughter, Steelers fan. So we have two ornaments. One, there's a Pittsburgh Steelers ornament, and we have a Cleveland Browns ornament. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Which one sits higher on the tree? Yeah. Well, yeah. And we put it on oh, the, depending yeah. how the teams are doing. Yeah is where we put the ornament. Mm -hmm. Now, the Steelers typically are a much better ball club. The Steelers ornament is typically very close to the angel on top of the tree. Mine team, the Cleveland Browns, are on the bottom rung of the Christmas tree, so much so that <laughs> the cat literally dry humps the damn <laughs> Cleveland <laughs> Browns ornament. Oh, no. And I'm sitting there and say, are you shitting me? Really? We got to go through this? And I sit there and laugh. So a couple of years ago, the Cleveland Browns beat the crap out of the Steelers, made it to the playoffs and everything. Yeah. So my, my wife and daughters are going, where's the Cleveland Browns ornament? I said, you see where the angel is at? They go, yeah, it's underneath their dress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I see. laughs> so you talk about baseball being one of your great sports. Are there many Greeks that play baseball? You know, there are a couple of Greeks that play baseball. Because we talked about ice hockey. We, yeah, I think we did that ice off hockey. Here, didn't we? Um, there is a guy from the Baltimore Orioles who mm -hmm. plays, um, and I forgot his name, thought I'm, I'm sorry. Nicholas Markakis? Markakis, that's yeah. it. Yeah. And hell of a ball player. Creighton. It's a hell of a ball player. Mm. Uh, look, the Greeks are great athletes. Is given, you know, but scholastically, I think we're the top ethnic group per capita. In the United right? States mm. for scholastics. We'll take it. Sorry, oh, scholastics. Damn, right? we'll What's that? Scholastically. Oh, Edu school. Education. education. Sorry, education. Sorry. Uh, education, yeah. There's another sport. That were some Clearly not highly... here. Yeah. yeah, what the hell? I, I, I was <laughs> praising you just about an hour yeah, ago. What? For what God's sake, that you were smart. I take that Who's back. Who's on second? Can we cut that yeah. one more time? You know, one, one more time. <laughs> was he on third base? Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Evidently, got hit in the head a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Talk about my concussions. Yeah, okay. exactly. You haven't talked about mine yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah, you were talking about concussions. Yeah. I don't know if I finished up. Yeah. yeah, I've been concussed four times. Yeah. And it was back in the day. You know, now they have concussion protocols, and I'm sure they have them with yeah, rugby now, definitely. too, as well. Yeah. You go into the tent, mm. they check you out, see if you've been concussed. They do. So, we well, have the same thing in football and everything, college ranks and pro ranks, you know. Mm. And it's hysterical because my daughters were, did you have concussion protocol, Dad, <laughs> when you played? Yeah, honey. Well, how'd that go? Okay, they would go up like, how many fingers do I have yeah. up? And if you're within one, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. And you go out, okay. Well, you go, you know, come back to the series later. Back in the 80s, we had the, the magic sponge. Magic sponge. Which was just a sponge in a bucket of water. They spray it all over your face. That's it. You feel okay? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Get okay. back. What's out your there. name, Bob? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Go back in. Okay. <laughs> that, we never got that. Are you okay? And if you nodded, yep. Get back out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, you know, back back in the day, it was just a different type of um, different type of game. Yeah. Because Greeks traditionally like the collision sports. So we talked about ice hockey and mm -hmm. gridiron. Mm -hmm. So there are some Greeks in uh, gridiron. There's a young Greek boy. There is. What was his name again? He um, just, um, just oh, won the Super went, Bowl. Yeah, and he went to Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, he went to Purdue. Did he really? Yeah, he sure did. Okay. And um, actually, um, his father was a collegiate athlete as well. His mother was a collegiate athlete. What's his last Carla name? Fittis. George Carlafitis. Carlafitis. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Purdue it. grad. Played at Purdue. Yep. In West Lafayette, Indiana. Parents were athletes. I think his father was water polo. And his mother was basketball, I think. And they lived in um, in West Lafayette. There so he go. was a product of that area. 
And he's a, he's a mad Panathinaikos fan, apparently. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, in one of his interviews. <laughs> what was it? Gate 15 or whatever it is? Yeah, it's one of those Gate things. Gate 15 all the way, man, he was yeah. saying. <laughs> and uh, we talked about Chelios uh, from the Chris. Detroit uh, Red Wings. Was he related to you? You said, or your wife? My, sister, my wife. And the thing is, Chris didn't really have that effervescent personality. So we were at a wedding, and they put us at the same table. He's sitting right next to me. He's looking miserable. And I just looked at him finally after about 45 minutes. I said, what, I got to get you in the penalty box and get two words out of you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, sometimes I feel uncomfortable. This is your cousin's wedding. I shouldn't be here. I'm the one who should be uncomfortable. Chris uh, affectionately would, would, you know, people would call him a goon because mm. he would go out and fight people and stuff. I always refer to him as the enforcer. Mm. I like enforcers. I don't like the, you know, you're on the ice, you're going to get laid out if you mm. pull some hanky-panky. I like that. Mm. But if you really think about the games that all three of us are into, mm. we're into gladiator sports. Mm. And I Definitely. love that. Yeah. I love the taste of blood. I love the taste of what we did. I love, you know, I still am friends with high school players yeah. and college <laughs> players after years of being removed from the game, close mm. to 40 years. Yeah. And I said, we were the band of brothers. Mm. Where you sit there and you talk about some of the stuff that we did. The war stories. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, the blood that we tasted and the scars that we got and the fingers. You know, there has been times when I had a finger. I think it was this one, the middle finger. Mm. It was actually pointing from here all the way over there. Yeah. And I go, hey, Billy. And he was the other linebacker. See anything wrong? Nah, looks good to me. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> he goes, give me this. And he pulls it back. That was it. Yeah. You know, you have you know you play with pain, yeah. And that was the fun part. It's the same thing in, in, in comedy. Someone dies in your family, you still got to go on. You still got to go on. It's true. Yeah. Do you, ever, do you ever get heckled in your shows? Yeah, but you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us some examples? What happens? And uh, well, give us some examples that you've had and how you've come. Oh out, my out God. Of it. Well, the thing is, you you hit them once, and when you hit them, you basically Give him a wink and a nod, yep. and that usually typically works. Now, watch what happens this week. <laughs> it's South Juniors, and I'm all of a sudden. Would so you get him here, hecklers in Australia? And they really don't. They've yeah, always yeah, yeah. been polite, but you know, you know, depends how much they to drink. Yeah, <laughs> if you drink, you 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 have no there's you, you have no sense. Yeah, anymore. We get more confident, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you come up with, hey, if I want to hear from an asshole, I'd fart. Yeah, you know, tell him <laughs> something like that. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just thought of one. Yeah, there's, there's an Australian uh, comedian from back in the uh, Rodney Rude. When was he? Uh, when was he around? Yeah, eighties, seventies, eighties. Like, mate, if I wanted shit, I'd squeeze your head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, I mean, you know, do I bother you at Macker's and yeah. fl- while you're flipping burgers? Do I? Yeah. Do no. I? You know, you know. You know um, but the thing is. Because I work the audience, there's not a standard, there's not a standard comeback that yeah, I have. Yeah, I say, you know, Depends and I'll just sit there. Who exactly gave you a speaking part in my show? <laughs> Who? Let me yeah. see. I go look through. My, nope, you're not fucking there. Who knew? <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought that you were there, and I go, you're not there. So if someone else says something, the only thing I got to do is this, yeah. <laughs> and they know. Shut yeah. up. Okay, that's good. Which is a nicer way. Of yeah. doing that, you mm-hmm. know, of shutting them up. But the thing is, if you get the audience and they're always on your side, mm-hmm. you know, like what I loved about the Australian audiences, man, they are just so much fun to be with. And they'll have all their different names and stuff that they go through. I do that stupid, you know, kula bula bula bullshit. Yeah. They, <laughs> you know, like, what a, to the avenue. But now I got to deal with Italians and Lebanese and I yeah. got to deal with uh, Egyptians and I got to deal with Chinese and Japanese. You know? And I love it because yeah. this show is for everyone. It's just not for one person in yep. mind with the Greeks in mind. It's for mm. everyone. Mm. So you do the characters and all the stuff that I do. I, I remember doing a thing about going down south and we were trying to get to a border. And they were checking us out for tsetse flies. <laughs> like, are, are you shitting me? I thought it was a joke. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no
Is there going to be a cavity search? Please, God, say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had it in a while. Move along, sir. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Jesus. But um, no, it's been great, man. It, it, it's been always a, a fun time being here. We did the largest ethnic, multi-ethnic show that I did with Joe Avati, George Camp, and Yaris, since I yes. hear yeah, Bilchik. Huge. And Comicus Erectus. Yeah, Comicus Erectus. Mm-hmm. And then we did the good, the bad, and the ethnic. Yeah. And uh, Rob, Tahane, uh, Rob Shahady mm-hmm. was also part of that as well. Nice, good bloke, man. I like him mm-hmm. a lot. And, and the thing is, we were none of us were... We'd always try and help each other if there was a bit they were working on, right? Yeah. You try something, it goes, oh, man, that's funny. That's funny. How about if you add this with it, mm-hmm. right? If you put that yeah. together with it. Because some, you know, we don't get all this stuff. The only yeah. time that I came up with everything on my own was writing that script, writing the TV show for the Basil show, yep. mm. um, doing all that stuff. Because I would, there were so many personalities that ran through my mind mm. when I would do stuff like that. I l- literally need to take a, an hour break to walk away from it, mm. yeah, and go grab a coffee, go grab some lunch, go grab some breakfast, whatever, just to get away from it. Mm. But you know, when I'm locked into my, you know into my uh, cabin it was it was on and yeah. then um, so yeah I took all the credit because I did this all by myself and I really appreciate the ability to be able to write a script like that for the movie mm. and now coming here was the uh, cherry on top yeah. you know coming and getting option for the movie then coming here it's been a phenomenal year yeah. and I, I want to thank Australia so much for having me um, to do this and being on your show yeah. Well, we're thankful to having you here. Man. Thank, thank you very much for being here. And yeah, look, we've gone probably yeah, well over yeah. time. <laughs> so we well, really, we really appreciate you being here. Before we go anywhere, though, <laughs> yeah. listen, folks, I want you to do me a favor. If you're on the social outlets, I want you to go yes. to Instagram and Facebook, which is Basil, B A S I L E, the comedian. Ba- it's all one word Basil, the comedian, one word. Follow me. Uh, check us out and then you'll see because we're posting now and starting tomorrow we do Basil on Tour colon Australia. Check out our website at Basil Live B-A-S-I-L-E L-I-V-E dot com uh, and then uh, look out because there's going to be the um, the notice uh, that we're going to release the um, the movie information and a little bit and Can't the press release. Cannot wait for that. Fire. It's going to be, and if you don't cry at the end, then you're not human. Again, to all my Aussie fans and everyone around the world who are listening right now, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, both of y'all, I don't know what to tell you, but thank you so no, much for having me. Uzo thank Talk you. with Nick and Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank was, you, mate. Well, well said, what a wrap up that is. I know. We yeah, didn't have we, to do all this time. I know. We didn't need to do it. <laughs> oh, let me do it in Greek. <laughs> yeah. Do it in Greek. Actually, can you do it in Greek? Rocky and Bill. Okay, in Greek. Like, you ready? Do it in Bullwinkle. <laughs> in Bullwinkle? Yeah. Pidia akute. Ime metoniko. No, nah, I'm not going to do this. I'm good. Nothing up by sleeve. Mm, natoniko ketotam. Okay, bravo, sides. Anyway, um... <laughs> In best. Greek, with my father's accent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to um, Uzo Talk. It's a good show. And uh, with uh, Nico and Tam, Karangiosis uh, after Tam. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, folks, thank you all so much for having me. Bullwinkle says, thank you so much for having us all. And James Brown, we forgot about James Brown, James the Godfather Brown. Yeah, Brown. You ready? Good yeah. God Almighty, this is, this is James Brown to let you know you're listening to Uzo Talk. With Nick and Tom. Huh. Good God Almighty. They two men could make a good dog lose a chain. Hi. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. What a, way, <laughs> what a way to wrap it up. Mate, how do you compete with that? You can't. Right? You can't. <laughs> Just don't try. Don't try. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> now I can finally eat Van Gogh. Uh, okay. I got Corta looking at me. Uh, All right. Absolutely. Look, guys, uzotalk at outlook.com is the email. Send us your email. Send us your messages. Follow us on social media at uzotalk and at uzo underscore talk on Instagram. Nick Athanasio, thank you very much, mate. Tom, you legend. Thank you, Ari. And uh, goodbye to everyone. Thank you. Ακολουθήστε μας στο Soundees, στο Spotify, στο Apple Podcasts και στο Google Podcasts.